All right, load game. Gerald Witcher. Level 204. Grave Sight Plane. Let's go. Let's just get right into it. No, you're welcome, final Asgard. Oh my gosh. Whew. Also, what is that thing in the distance? It looks like a crumbled egg that turned into a mountain. Speaking of things in the distance. It looks like a bunch of hands made out of iron in the, on the top of it. It's walking. Walking. And so are we. I'm walking toward it. Chill Will, greetings and salutations. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Good to see you, Chill Will. Thanks for coming to today's stream. Evening gaming streams. Emotional damage. Emotional damage. Should I go attack that first? Or should I not? I think I'm not. I think I'm going to uh, talk to this person first. Hello? The Gilded Knight. Gilded, uh, Roman? Hello? Ah, Lady Leda spoke of you. Another lady. That tarnished. Guided here by kindly Mikola. Guided. Weren't we all? I am Freya. I once fought alongside General Radan. Oh my In gosh. Battle, you can be sure I'll hold my own. Battle. I love her accent. Everything all right? Yes, it is. Five looses. Yes, it is. We picked up uh, my father from his car accident, and he is fine, though the car be totaled. Um, yes, there was water on the highway. He uh, hydroplaned, spun out, smacked into the median a bunch of times, and uh, the car was, de like, just destroyed. The front of it was crumpled. Uh, the engine messed all up. Uh, but he was... Quite well preserved, just a couple of cuts on his on his arms. So no harm, no foul, actually. Yeah, thank God, oh dear. <laughs> that's right, five looses, that's right. Thank the Lord. Yes, let's. <sighs> I'm going to change the armor a bit. It's better armor, but it's heavy load. Any oh. Okay, never mind. We can't wear anything more. A heavy helm. All right, we have to work on endurance, I guess. Hello. Freya. We have Leda and Freya. Freya is just a straight-up reference to... Is there a knight standing down there? Yes. Reference to North myth Norse mythology. Goddess of war? Oh, another thing. Did you speak to our dour little friend? If you've yet to do so, have him give you a map of the cross's whereabouts. The cross? You'll find more of them dotted about these lands. They are Mikola the Kind's footprints. If you've yet to do so, assuming you intend to trace Kind Mikola's path. If you've yet to do so, assuming you intend... Okay. Interesting. Imperian Blood Virgin. We have to read that. Wait a minute. Um, they say that they added a new inventory slot for recent items, but I don't see that anywhere. So glad he's okay. Car accidents, yuck. But any accident you walk away from is good. Thank you, God, for watching over him. Amen to that. Chill will into that indeed. Ah, so this is something we found the other night and didn't read. Spirit Gravestone. A piece of gravestone that has started to turn into a spirit. Material used for crafting items. Also, the camera is wonky. Uh, <clears throat> mainly found on Gravesite Plain. In places to where the dead have been brought since antiquity... The oldest gravestones turn into spirits, and then fade away. So that's what's happening here. That's what's happening in the gravesite plain. Fascinating. 
Empyrean blood virgin. A young shoot, heavy with Empyrean blood. Material used for crafting items, exceedingly rare to find. Said to burgeon forth from where the golden blood of Mikola, the wounded Empyrean, pooled. Well, well, well. Mikola seems to have been really just used and abused in the history of this game. We don't even know what he did or didn't do. Pick up item. Scadu tree fragment. What? What'd you call me? Scad, you tree. No. I don't want a scad. Where? What? There it is. Bolster's scadru tree bl blessing. Hmm. Oh my, what can we craft with it? Yeah, I wish they would tell us that. What we can craft with the materials we get. We have to find the recipes first, I guess. He'd mentioned your car accident, and then he had to shut the stream because of the accident with his dad. That's... is that true? <laughs> I didn't remember that. That's bizarre. Ah, uh, da 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 da. Oh. I didn't see that. Hmm. Oh yeah, that's true. The other day you did have the accident. There's been a lot of accidents recently, honestly. Things come in waves, it seems. How'd you like the Chosen last night, dude? Dude. The the beginning was quite unusual, right? Uh, the celebration of Hanukkah and the, like, dinner theater with the disciples and themselves. That was a little awkward, but it was fun. And then the rest of the uh, the episode was absolutely fantastic. And you know why? Because they directly followed the Bible. I love it when they do that. They could do the whole show according to the scriptures, and they haven't. But whenever they do, it is the best of the show. And uh, they, they showed Jesus looking at and talking about the, the sheepfolds to Judas. And then he talks to the religious leaders about the sheepfolds and that he is the door of the sheepfold and they are the robbers and all of that. And then they picked up stones to stone him, as it says in the scriptures, and, uh, you know fight broke out and they had to run away. Like that, that, yeah, that was an amazing interpretation of the passage. And I think it's actually probably quite close to what actually happened. Yeah. That when they create a fascinating backstory and then it plays right into a story straight from the Bible. Yeah. It's it's quite impressive what they've done with the writing. Although I'm, I'm not a big fan of the additions. You know. All of my least favorite content from the show is the stuff they've added to the Bible, and all the best content is the biblical content. Like the walking on the water, you know, the, with Peter. They added a lot of talking on the water, which I thought was really kind of funny, kind of silly. They're just having a back and forth. Peter is arguing with, Simon, is arguing with Jesus about, you know, why did you let my unborn child die? And it's like, I don't know if this is the time, Simon Peter. Uh, <laughs> I love that scene because of the, the biblical historicity of it and it ties in the story but it's just like they could have done that without it and it would have been just as good but uh, they, they do add a lot and it does add a lot literally and figuratively uh, to the experience and it is a TV show first and foremost rather than a Jesus movie but I would prefer a Jesus movie they have the production for it they have all they need, they have amazing actors, they have amazing set design. Like, Jerusalem looks amazing. The temple structure is incredible. What do I do, Lord? Destroy the child. Corrupt them all. This is their plan, people. These are demons. <laughs> Thank you, Solomon. They're kind of apt. <laughs> How's your dad? I didn't get to hear. Xanadu Beach, welcome back. How do you, Xanadu? And my father is very, very good. My father is fine. Um, he has a couple of abrasions on his arms and a bruise on his, his left bicep 
from the airbag deploying, but he is well. He is good. He feels good. He looks good. Uh, he's doing quite well. The vehicle is destroyed, but my father is quite safe. Seems to be unharmed. Doesn't seem to have any internal damage. No whiplash, nothing like that. So, praise God for that. Agreed, I understand why there are those who split hairs on a frustratingly macro level, but it's clearly for entertainment value. Exactly, exactly. And I'm not going to call them out and say, you're a heretic, or you're, you know, your theology is wrong, because they clearly made up so much. It's, it's a historical fiction, you know? You have to know what it is, and, and that it makes a difference. But, um... I have my own preferences for what I would do if I had all of that money and those actors. Like, oh my gosh. And he said, um, the creator, that they're not going to do the transfiguration. And that makes me sad. Because that could be so well done with the production quality they have. Like, why not? And he said, because I don't know how to do it. It's like, well, come up with something, you idiot. <laughs> That's how I feel. Uh... Finkali hates when they add dialogue to Jesus that isn't in the Bible, and I understand that. Those are the parts that typically make me cringe. Yeah, yeah, making him say things that are just like, okay. Yeah. Also, just the modern speech is just kind of cringe, too, sometimes. But it's kind of funny. It's kind of silly. It, the, what it is, is a modern way that a Christian is finding to preach using a fictitious version of and vision of how he reads the Bible, which is unusual. It's like modern teaching methods of like, you know, focusing on how do we deal with lo the loss of a loved one? Well, let's write a Bible story about that, which is um, very odd, but I do love the show, nevertheless. The added backstory to the disciples that fits with the Bible are my favorite parts. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like him. <laughs> I don't like him. I liked the Simon the Zealot part. I thought that made a lot of sense historically. I thought it explains a lot about ex his character and his connections to people and how people would have thought about him. Same thing with Matthew. Simon does not seem like Simon from the Bible. Simon didn't need tragedy in his life in order to be an interesting character. Uh, yeah, Matthew was just great. Like, I love what they added to his character, because it just... It's not something the Bible talks about, but he does have the most literal, like, fundamentally, like, OCD gospel in the Bible, <laughs> in the New Testament. So you can see how that might influence... Or you can see his character being someone who actually has OCD, or someone who has some level of autism. You know, he's on the spectrum, as they say. And you know that there have been people on the spectrum throughout history, so it, you know, it gives a lot of, of, uh, of character and, and flavor to Matthew. And I love that. But Simon? And I like the Simon that they've come up with, but the whole loss of of his child just seemed very forced like and now we need tragedy like why isn't there enough tragedy in the story of Christ I, I don't think that adding that into the story of Christ Jesus negates the rest of the tragedy that they're dealing with later on as if you need to deal with that right now instead of later you know because they're going to deal with it in the next episode you know, they're starting to deal with it right now. Anyway. That tragedy isn't coming till season six. Well, there are other tragedies, though. Van Lasgaard. <laughs> Ads. Yeah. Ad break. We'll be right back. Hello, friends. Are we back? Are we back? Ad break. Thank you for the ad revenue, everyone. Ah. Final Asgard is back. Huzzah! We have returned. Yay! Yeah, as I was saying, there is definitely tragedy uh, surrounding Jesus and the disciples. 
the loss of John the Baptist we just went through. And that was big. That was a big loss, final Asgard. I don't feel like they needed to add the death of a child, the death of John the Baptist already happening, the death of Rhaema, the death of... L L what's it? Uh, Lazarus. The death of Jesus. Like, they're probably going to add in other deaths as well. Because it seems to be what the writers want to do and want to deal with is death and meaningless chaos and how to deal with that. But I feel the Bible deals with that in so many other ways that are just fine, that don't really need extra deaths added onto it in order to tell the same story, you know? Yeah, exactly. The Rama part was really odd. I still don't think that needed to happen. I at all. Especially because, they, like I said, they just had Eden's child die for no good reason. And now they have someone else die for no good reason. And the reason why they gave for causing her to die was because they needed Thomas to have a reason to be doubtful. So I was like, well, God, you didn't save my uh, engaged, my fiancé, so I'm going to doubt that you are raised from the dead. And it's like, why isn't it just his personality? Like, it could just be that his parents also were critical and doubtful. Why make it tragedy-based? Is everything tragedy-based? Is our entire personality based on the bad things that happened to us? No, obviously not. Obviously not. We have personalities from God. Same thing with Matthew. Like, it's not tragedy that informs his personality. Anyway, it's it's very strange. It's very strange. It didn't need to happen. Um, and most of the community doesn't like it either, but they're willing to deal with it because the show is so good otherwise. <laughs> um, and I do think that most of the time, Jesus did heal those around him. Like, if ever anyone died, it was because he wanted them to be raised from the dead, so that he could heal them. Because, as it says in the Bible, if he were there, and as it says in The Chosen, if he were there, he would have healed Lazarus. So, if he were there when Rhema died, which he was, he would have healed her. Because he healed, quote-unquote, everyone. Whenever anyone brought anyone to him, he healed everyone. Unless there was doubt... And people were trying to get him out of the village, like of Nazareth. It says he left, and he could do very few miracles in that town, right? That's the only time in the Bible. So, and I know they're not going on the Bible with Rhema. That's the problem. That's the problem. It's not justified, and that's my problem with it. But I, I could talk about The Chosen all day. Your son just left to go spend a few days at his grandparents' house. Already weirdly quiet here. Well, enjoy the quiet, my good paladin. Enjoy it, enjoy it. Especially when it looked like it was the result of Jesus going to f pick a fight with the Pharisees. Also, because not only did Jesus want to pick a fight with the Pharisees and cause a ruckus, but also, if Matthew hadn't been called by Jesus, what's his name? The praetor at the time would not have gotten angry because all of his... Debts would be cleared by Matthew's amazing calculations. Um, which does bring up, writing-wise, that Jesus is, the, is at fault entirely for him flying off the handle, for the Pharisees going crazy, and uh, for Rhema's death. And then he doesn't say anything about it other than it was not her time. Like, okay. But why, though? Biblically. You know? And there's no answer. They just wanted needless death because... Shock value? It's okay. Nothing of value has been lost. <laughs> that's, how it, that's how it feels. It's just like, oh, she was a side character. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, it's storytelling. <laughs> bad storytelling um because you could see it from a mile away when she gets stabbed it's like oh they fridged the female character there this is this is a trope well known in the writing world 
If nothing exciting is happening, kill off a character, a side character. Especially a woman, especially if they are in some way romantically connected with one of the main characters. Because it's very effective at causing an emotional response. Called fridging. Um... And it's, it's pathetic, honestly. Especially when there is no biblical basis for it. What show are we discussing? The Chosen, Paladin Lock. The Chosen, Jesus Story. Excellent, excellent TV show. But uh, there are problems I have with a few of the moments in it. I love it, and it's very good at getting people to have an interest in the Bible, which I think is the best the best thing about it. Fridging. Fridge. Yes. It, uh, the terminology was termed, coined, in, I think, the 70s or 80s, when in Green Lantern, a certain volume of Green Lantern, um, you know, its, its ratings were going down because they had basically gone through every story that they could with Green Lantern at this point. And so Green Lantern is in a relationship uh, and I think it's his wife, and he's dealing with the, <laughs> I can't remember his name, the Yellow Lantern, and so he goes out to fight him, the Yellow Lantern comes to his house, kills his wife, sticks her body in the fridge uh, for him to come and, and find, and he comes and he finds her body, and and it's like, Yellow Lantern! You know, so so there's like vengeance in his heart to go and fight him now. So it was shock value and emotional response and a, a vengeance plot that sets Green Lantern over the edge. And ever since then, depowering a, a beloved female character, either to where she has to be reliant on the main character or is killed out of the situation is called fridging. And uh, it's it's very it's it's so obvious, right? It's so unsubtle. It's the opposite of subtlety. You've heard of the chosen? My old youth pastor recommended to to me. Yes, I recommend it as well. I recommend it as well. But always go in thinking this is a Hollywood director's fictional story. It is a historical fiction, not a Biblical, like, Bible, what, what, what do you say? It's not trying to adapt the Bible, although it does, in many scenes and episodes. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know, man. It just, they, they add so much, and they change several things, and they do things. They take a lot of creative liberties, so go in knowing that, and maybe you'll be able to enjoy it. Think of it as kind of a, a unique creative devotional so that you have the ability to think about Jesus and the historical times in a more grounded light. Because that's the point of the show. It's like showing that Jesus and the disciples all were real people who had real lives, real hearts, real desires, hates, loves, uh, real jobs, dealt with money, dealt with each other real relationships. Jesus laughed and fought and, you know, argued and um, laughed with the disciples. That's what's it, what it's about. That's what it's about. Personally not a fan, Kankali? Yeah, I love it, but it does have its issues. If you know the Bible and you love the Bible, or its theological merit, and you don't want to see it any differently than the Bible does, I wouldn't watch the show. I would not recommend it if you are looking for a direct adaptation of the Bible. Because it's not. They're not trying for that. Didn't know Asians can be lanterns, Kappa. What? What? The Dresden Files fridged a character. Yeah. There you go. There you go. It happens so often. It's like The Walking Dead did it like every few weeks. <laughs> every few episodes. Uh, the, the, the uh, uh, Lost did it. Oh, <laughs> Asians. Oh my gosh, song. 
The Chosen is a historical fictional account of the impact that Jesus had on those impacted. That's my best description of the show. Yes, it's a it's about the fictional backstories of the disciples. What could they have been like? What could have happened in their lives that adds to the biblical account? And they interact with Jesus. And I think that all the actors do an excellent job. I don't know that I would be interested if it doesn't teach me anything. Well, it teaches you... It doesn't teach. It just, it kind of gives you... How does it, how does it say it? It's like, look at these people dealing with these biblical questions. You know, why does God allow bad things to happen? Um, how did Simon Peter deal with the other people in his cadre? You know, and how did Jesus feel about that? Um, I don't know. It can it can teach you things indirectly about morality, and it's, it's supposed to be relatable to people. You know. It can teach you a lot, just know that it isn't the Bible, but it makes me want to read the stories in the Bible even more. Yes, exactly. And I, I, that's how I feel about the show, is that it's not to be taken as a Jesus story. It's not to be taken as a Jesus movie, an adaptation of the Bible. It's meant to be something that causes you to think about the Bible. And if that is something that happens, then it's a success, you know? If it causes you to think about the Bible and causes you to want to read it yourself, then the, the purpose of the show has been served. And I think that's objectively a good thing. No matter how much they absolutely destroy about the story, about the, the history, the truth of it, no matter how much they, they don't show, they don't put in, uh, or change, it's, it's better that people are actually interested in the story of Jesus, then that we don't have it, you know? We can so quickly pass by the words Sar mentioned, a character and never stop to think about the reality of those people. That's right. That's right. People I read about in the Bible are actually real people with real backstories that are, we just aren't told about. True. And they fill in those, those storylines. And I'm not a fan of a lot of those storylines. <laughs> but it's interesting. It's kind of, it's fun to watch. Um, and what they always say is, it's for the purpose of entertainment, but I know, I know it's not. I know it, they definitely are putting across their own sermoning, their own preaching through the new narratives that they add. Which is fine, because those are generally biblical, but it's not in the Bible, those events. And I would like them to stick to the biblical events, because they're so good at doing that. Whenever they stick to the biblical events and adapt those, it's perfect. It's amazing. It's the most historically accurate portrayal of Jesus events that has ever happened when it's actually taken directly from the Bible. You know? Whenever they just get rid of all the writing and they take the inspiration of Scripture, the, ins the Word of God, and they use the Scripture as the script then the show is, it's the best show on television. My biggest gripe so far is the scene about Peter being the rock. I mean, I'm not going to get super theological about it, but that's the part Catholics use to say he was the first pope. Yeah, and I don't think that it was much different than what happened in that scene, but it, they did seem to make it a sort of holier than thou, Peter is now ascendant um, sort of thing. Whereas the Bible is not as clear on that. It's not like Jesus said, You are the rock, and on you I'm going to build my church. He said, I will call you the rock, and on this rock I will build my church. Which, and I, I call you the rock, and it is revealed to you who I am. Right? What did he say the rock was? It was Jesus, not Peter. It was Jesus being the Son of God. On this rock, meaning Jesus is the Son of God, uh, that is what the rock is that we are to cling to. The rock that is higher than I. Mustafar, greetings and salutations, friend. Welcome to the chill channel of Charles. We're just chatting at the moment. Who are you, Mustafar? Who are you? Right, I have the same opinion as you, yes. 
I have 12.05 hours in Anno 1800 already. Wow. There isn't enough good Christian entertainment out there. That's true. I'm Mustaf. Hello, Mustaf. <laughs> I'm Charles. <laughs> Pleasure to make your acquaintance. Alrighty, friend. Now, that's why I like The Chosen so much. It's Christian content that is actually well done. But also, quote, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. Exactly, Solomon. Is the Bible telling us that our lives need to be founded on St. Peter? I, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. I like meat. Meat who? Who the heck are you? Are you our dour friend? You have omen horns coming out of your head. Did you know that? Exactly what you were going to say next. <laughs> yeah, no Bible bot, I'm afraid. Another. I've thought about doing it, but I'm not sure if I then, as that woman would truly say, want to. We are in our purpose Probably should. Well aligned, but understand, your kind are not forgiven. The Earth Tree is my people's enemy. By Marika long betrayed, set aflame. I believe Mikkel's apologies when he says our delivery will come, but never will I see your kind as worthy. Can you say that again? I was half paying attention. What is your face? Is it a bunch of knotted rope? Or is that a bunch of maggots? Or what? He's obviously an omen. He's trying very hard not to be one. And yet my oath I cannot overlook. If Mikaled is whom you would seek, then comrade, allow me to give you this. These are the sights of the crosses I found. I urge you, follow after Mikila. As long as you abide by his footfalls, you will be no enemy to me. Cross map. Interesting. They do actually call them crosses. Very much looks like Evangelion uh, angel death sites. Might actually be a reference to it. Yeah, everyone who hears these words of mine, who does them, will be like a wise man who built his house on the Peter. Yeah. Carved words coalesce. I abandon here the first of the flesh of my body. Oh, so Mikola forsook his body as well as Rani. Interesting. You die! Um, didn't get anything from that. Alright, I need to go and attack this thing. Well, I don't need to, but I'm going to. Hopefully you don't get third-partied by another uh, item, another enemy, I mean. We're in it, friends. We're in it. Oh, no. Oh, he's kicking. <laughs> I did not expect that. Can we hit these? Can we strike them? Oh, goodness. Um, yeah, I'm going to heal myself immediately because Torrent is almost dead. Oh, my Jiminy Japes. How? Yeah, there goes Torrent. He has little... Um... <laughs> uh... I should not have done this. Oh! My face. I keep just tanking it. He's very good at following me. <laughs> he has little, uh... Giant heads. Oh! Um, hmm.
I got nothing. You can jump over that, which is bizarre. Like, there's no way I'm going to be able to kill this thing with this amount of damage. What was that? What's that sound? Is he being staggered? He staggers easily enough. Oh, I jumped right on top of that. Poor timing. Uh oh. Back on the horse. Oh, snap. Oh, I tried to jump. Didn't work. Stay alive, Torrent. Stay alive. game? Okay, we're back. Oh no, double! What's up, the Oathless? How's it going, Oathless? Good to see you, good to see you. Welcome to the Chill Channel, and to my soon-to-occur death to this giant wicker man. Yet to fight against this? I'm trying, but I don't think I have the power. Like, you will have to get a lot of power from this guy. What is that? Rada fruit. I, oh! Ouch. Wah. Wah. Okay. Why do you keep doing that? I didn't see that coming. Nope! Keep stomping. Oh, he fell over. Oh my gosh. There is no way. Get off! I can't hit him. It. I don't know how much damage I'm doing. Am I doing any damage? <laughs> um. Well, that seems fruitless. Run. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> After all that. Didn't even see this guy's health bar. It's, it's huge, man. Just like him. Just had Din Din, mashed cassava and chicken. I hope you enjoyed it, my good man. Doing well, just took a break from Elden Ring. Just been exploring for the most part. Excellent, as you should. How are you? I am... Okay. Uh, interesting day. I definitely... Uh, am tired from a bit of adrenaline as I heard that my father was in a car accident and had to go help him. And so we helped him out, and um, and he's fine. But it was kind of shocking to be like, your father got into a car accident on the highway. And I'm like, oh, snap. So. Yeah. Enhance attacks on horseback. Thank you. I'll try this. Also, um... 
fire armor. What's good for fire? Clean rot helm. I don't know if I'm going to wear the helm. Heavy. Not heavy. Okay. Heavy. I guess the scaled set has more fire resist. That would make sense. Heavy load. My, what a heavy load. <laughs> Addition to make Jesus Elden Lord. <laughs> Oceansless. Oh, hi. Welcome back. <laughs> Amen to that. Amen to that. Glad he's okay. Me too. Was a good dinner? Huzzah. Good stuff, good stuff. Game need to make able to do sick backflips. I think there is a backflip ability. I don't have it, but... There is a backflip ability. And it is sick. How's you enjoying the DLC? Well, I haven't really seen much of it. How did that miss me? I'm glad it did. But, um... So far, it is it is rather hype, rather crazy. Not sure what to make of it just yet. Not a whole lot of lore. Oh snap! <laughs> Focusing. No, 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 no. <laughs> Saw that happening. Oh dear. Oh no. You can kind of roll that. As bizarre as that is. Where's my... Snap. Oh! I'm taking less damage. Not a two-shot. Yeah, there it is. What? What? What was that? Never seen that before. Rolled at the wrong time. Too early. Too early again. Ooh, okay. We can do this. We can do this. Whew. Getting tired of the stylist profession. Too many loading screens. <laughs> Too many loading screens for the stylist. Fair enough. No, Gorsi! I know. How did this miss? Um... Hmm. We're okay, we're okay, we're doing all right. I... I'm gonna try again. Oh! There goes all of the livestock in the area.
Yeah, I know how to do that now. Get off of that wall. No! What? That did not hit me. The strangest... Strangest hitbox I've ever seen. Getting quite a few runes from... Cool! From the, <laughs> the creatures round about here. Now. I'm ready for that. Thank you, horsey. Very useful. <laughs> Didn't have any energy. No! Run away. Run away, get up. Need the horse. What is he doing? Oh! Can't believe he hit me there. No! Oh, double whammy? Oh my gosh. Okay. I think my sim Jeffrey Shoglikov will work with music next, just because. Either music or cooking. Yes. I wonder if he can be killed indirectly. I know that range would probably help a lot. This boss seems massive, or is it a mini-boss? It's a mini-boss. I mean, there are multiple of them throughout the lands here, so... Yes. Done ordered yourself some Pizza Hut. Delish! Enjoy it, because I can't. My good paladin. I am indeed jealous. Did you really send a postcard to a follower before? Oh yes, I've done dozens of postcards to people. Two packs already have been sent out throughout the world. Different time zones, different nations. Wow. Okay. He's not dead. About to be. How far can those go? Not too far. That's good. Um, what can I use here? All oh, the birds are after me. There. Ow. 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 Okay. Not too far out. Cheers, Charles. I've laid ten rolls of sod, now relaxing in the chill channel, being blessed by this noxious cigar the Lord has blessed me with. <laughs> noxious cigar? I don't I don't think the Lord blesses us with cigars. I think he curses us with those. Do be careful, your my friend. Love and miss, Pizza Art, yes. The bosses so far on here have been ridiculous. No spoilers, though, yes. I'm going to take this with a very fine tooth comb, very slowly, and, uh, not going to rush a thing, so it's going to be taking a lot longer um, for me to get through this than a lot of other people would take. As you can probably tell already. Still in the main area, the first area. Get wrecked, bird. Get out of here. Every enemy gives at least... 1,000 runes. That's helpful. Whoa! He one-shot my horse. Oh! The giant is coming. I didn't think he'd follow me this far. Oh. Yeah, he didn't. He, he had to teleport away. Because he's not supposed to be here. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, I look forward to the bosses, kind of, but I also am scared because I don't want to experience anything worse than Melania. And they said there would be. would be a lot worse than Melania. Is there a side of grace I missed here? Yes. Yes, there is. Very well. I, I was here, though. Didn't see any of this. I had the patience to wait. I'd order a new postcard for you, dear Charlie. Oh, thank you. Now I want pizza, darn you. Yes, Slave Fever, he said. The 
the P word. Hold on. Can I read this again? I know. All your resentment lingers, yet... The raw stuff from which I shall surely forge a curse upon the dastard Mesmer's head. Upon... Upon Marika's children, each and all. Every DLC seems to have someone cursing people's children. Why? Every single one. Strange. Is there an item? Hmm, black firefly. That's new too. More materials. Oh, hi, dogs. The shadow dogs. They just had to add in new types of dogs, didn't they? They still gave beast blood. Nothing changed there. Hmm. My lady is making burritos with chips and guac. Marvelous, my man. The Lord bless this great nation with the gift of tobacco enjoyed always in extreme moderation. <laughs> Uh, something I learned about my tobacco usage is no matter how little I use, it's always going to impact my liver and lungs and mouth. So, it's better to not use it. Skadju tree fragment to empower blessing. I, yes? Skadju tree blessing empowered. Two fragments? Not enough. Fragments. Revered Spirit Ash Blessing. They've added a lot in this game. I don't know what that means. Plus, the Catholics said it was fine. <laughs> yeah. The Catholics always say it's fine. That's a funny thing. Catholics are known for being the more judgmental of the denominations. And yet they're like, no, you can, you can drink and smoke to your heart's content. What? Take care of your temple, man. If there's anything that is known to cause disease, don't eat it. Or smoke it. Like, no matter what you are smoking, whether it be tobacco or any other drug, or anything else, anything that is on fire that causes smoke, anything you inhale that is not air, is going to hurt your lungs. That's just, that's just the, the truth of it. And your body does not recover from it. Your, your lungs were not made to heal in the same way that the outside of your body was. So, whenever you have any little, little smoke, cigar, cigarette, pipe, even if you smell, if you smell the smell of a cigar, cigarette, or pipe, you are inhaling smoke, secondhand smoke, which is just as bad as directly inhaling it. And it will have an effect over time, so be cautious, friends. Be cautious. In other words, don't smoke. It's not okay for anyone to smoke. Like, your body can indeed heal from a small amount of alcohol. There's nothing wrong with alcohol before drunkenness. It's the drunkenness that's the problem with alcohol, not the alcohol itself. But when you, you take a, a, a puff of anything, it will have permanent damage upon your body, however small that is. Either way, I, I'm very strong on that, <laughs> so I, I'm sorry to be a Debbie Downer. I just want people to live as long as possible with as, li as, as little disease as possible. I think the Lord desires that for you, too. Smithing stone fives. Can we get smithing stones eight and nine, please? Even one would be nice. So where have we been? So we did this, we did this, we did a little bit of that. Uh, I wanted to kill the giant, but I don't... I don't think we have the power to do so yet. Something tells me that. If we had the better version of the fire... 
Talisman, I think we could. Maybe. I could also wear better armor. Helm of Solitude, man. It's very good. Very good. Probably isn't better, but I enjoyed scented candles a lot. <laughs> scented candles are excellent. Um, you don't have to be inhaling the smoke, though. Like, as long as the scented candle is further away, you're fine. If it's if it's it's not smoke you're inhaling from the scented candle, it's wax. In fact, um, there are currently only 33 channels with a Christian tag live right now. Five of them are playing Elden Ring. Nice, nice, Final Asgard. I'm glad other people are as well. Whenever I raid out after doing Elden Ring, um, I always end up being the only one left. But the game is getting a resurgence because of the new DLC, so that's cool. Fair enough. I pride myself on not being easily offended. It's really fairly rare for me. Also, it's not burning, so it'll be put out early. Marvelous living to me. I keep a candle on my desk. Helps me relax when I play games. Yes. Charlie, would you like to see the drawing I worked on today? Yes, of course I would. Also, cigars should not be inhaled, but yes, there's, of course, inherent risk. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. L literally playing with fire, you know. As long as you know the risks and uh, are willing to take damage to your person. No, I'm not going to say and it's okay for anyone to use it. Never. Not even once. We don't know what. Oh, yeah, I already upgraded these. Um, what was I going to do here? There was something I was going to do. Oh, man, I forgot. Oh, well, I can upgrade the Great Sword. I don't know that it'll be very great. Great Sword of Solitude. 100 physical damage. B scaling in strength. That'll be much more damage than the Knight's Cold Great Sword, that's for sure. And. Bandit's Knight. Well, it starts with less damage, so... Hmm. Hmm. Maybe not. Think the drawing on the server are under arts. Thank you, Petit Drain On. I'll take a look at that later. Actually, oh, I read that. Yeah. Making your area smell like a raspberry tart. Delicious. I love tarts. When you can, please take a look. It would mean so much to me, as it always means. Of course, my friend, of course. So yeah, what we need to do here is go back to the overworld, and then we can find the plus two Flame Drake Talisman, which on this character I don't have for some reason. Um, where to find... Plus three variation of the Flame Drake Talisman can be found inside a chest in the shadow of the Erd Tree. What? What? Whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, that would be nice to find if I'm anywhere near that location. Which I don't think I am. can try to find it, though. I think it would be easier to find the original. Plus two variant. They have plus threes, though. Spoilers! Beastman of Feramazula in Dragonbarrow Cave in Eastern Dragonbarrow. What? Oh. Dragonbarrow as in Kaelid. Oh my goodness, I haven't gone to Kaelid in a long time. Yeah, alright. I know where that is. Very well. Very well. Let's do that. We've done Dragon Barrow, though. What? Ooh, container items. Where is that, I wonder? All new imagery. Neato. Okay. I'm too heavy. If we are able to get 360,000 runes, we'll definitely use them to upgrade endurance. I think I'll raise this. Medium load, there we go. 
Neato, that's Dark Souls. <laughs> Neato. Neato Mosquito. Yeah, that's definitely way too heavy. I'm sad that I can't wear the Armor of Solitude. It is very heavy indeed. Even with lighter black armor on. It's not entirely black, though. It's more shiny than that. Hmm. Which do I like better, this or this? Definitely this. Hmm. How much is needed? Like 20? 20, 20 equip load? Great mercy. That's a lot. That, that's a lot. Fine, we'll go with this. Neato burrito, Sir Afanessa. I, I agree with that statement. Wholeheartedly. Let's go further in. Did we not defeat the boss down here? Wow, he still has a whole lot of health. What? I rolled past him. Rune Bear from Kalid. Still giving me a heckin' distress. And level 200. Yikes. He was way tougher than I imagined. Super excited for the DLC for Victoria 3, but I still have so long to wait. How long until the Victoria 3 DLC, my good man? Hi, guys. Alright, we need to find the way down now. That, oh, it's alright there. <laughs> so dark. I thought the lamp was out. It's already on. Oh, no. Be released Monday at 1 p.m. That's not too far away. That's not too far away at all. Yeah, I missed this. Dude. I was not paying attention when I played through this character's playthrough. Alright. I guess I went in here, got killed by the bear, and then ducked out. This is back that way. Here we go. Pop it. Pop it. Mm, drop it. I wanted to do a plunge attack, but too far away. Beast blood. Hello. Bye. Hope the DLC may make the game better and not worse. I hope so as well for your sake, my friend. We shall see. I do find the game is much more silky smooth when you're not in the DLC area. That much is certain. Which is kind of sad. Blood boil aromatic. Drink that potion. Get these guys wrecked. Oh my gosh. Okay, he did. Backstab? 
No. What? I'm gonna use this. Ah! Just dying. Alright, Charles wins again. Flame Drake Talisman plus two acquired. There we go. Oh, we can also add more resistances on top of that. Hmm. Might as well do that. Alright, back to the Dulk. Leche Dulce. Where is. How? <laughs> um. Einsel, Siofra, Deep Root, Crumbling, Graveside Plain. There we are. Alright, I guess we did not go southward. We could do that. You want to run with the Black Knife Armor? Would look cool in this DLC. Black Knife Armor. Yes, oh yeah, the, the assassin stuff. That is some of the best looking armor in the game. I'd say, especially without the veil on it. But it has so, so little defense. Like, you die in two hits to most things in the DLC. And that with heavy armor. Charles, I'm not entirely sure, but I believe you may be capable of flying. It is your unique ability. Oh my gosh! Thanks for letting me know. Ooh -hoo! I tried to jump over it and go to the side. It didn't work. Didn't work. Woo! What? It still hit me? From all the way over here. Okay. It's not doing his stompy bits, so that's good. Oh, now he is. Oh, jump! Didn't jump. A little late. <laughs> Just have to wait till he's done stomping. Ra 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 ra. That was close. the other weapon. You were doing 514. Okay, that's more more damage. Get off the horse. Yeah, that helps. It definitely helps. Nice. Back on the horse. Imagine if I would be able to kill this thing without the power of anything gained in the DLC. Wouldn't that be glorious? Would that not be glorious? Yeah, 
Yeah, jump over that. Where is his face? It's inside of the earth. What? Am I even hitting it? Where is the health bar? There it is. Finally! Death by a thousand cuts. Charles wins again! Huzzah! I killed a furnace visage. Deflecting hard tier and furnace visage. Charles wins again. That was um, that was hard fought. That was definitely hard fought. So he's one of those a talisman. Furnace visage. No, maybe it's just a helmet. Furnace visage. Visage. It's not a helmet or a talisman. In equipment? I don't know where to find this thing. Is it um, an item? A usable item? No, not a consumable. Okay. What are we looking at here? Nothing. Oh. Key item. Deflecting hard tier. Enhances spontaneous guard in mixed physic. A crystal tear formed slowly over the ages, where the scattered sap of the scadu tree... Scadu tree sounds disgusting. Pools deep within the furnace golems. They're called furnace golems, and be mixed in the flask of wondrous physic. The resulting concoction temporarily enhances spontaneous guard. What the heck is spontaneous guard? Damage negation and guard poise will be heightened in the moment immediately after assuming a guarding stance. Successfully executing a spontaneous guard will also strengthen guard counters. What? 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 What is a spontaneous guard? I have no clue. Anyway, ad break, and I need to take a bathroom break. So, um... Uh... I guess I'll just sit in the hot, the hot area where that thing originally fell. Yeah. Be right back, friends. Don't go away. The adventure continues right after these quick messages. I love you.
All right. Greetings and salutations, ladies and gentlemen. Charles has returned. Huzzah! <laughs> Let's take a look at the quote-unquote bird tree, if that even is what this is. Is it the same herd tree? I bet it's a different herd tree than the one in the overworld. The only thing that makes sense to me is otherwise this would be a time traveling thing. And I don't think that's what's happening. This old area looks. Well. We may be. Well, we're in an island. I did not expect this to be an island, I thought it would be a walled off valley. Um, no. Island. We'll have to open up more of the map, and I think I'm going to go southward instead of northward. So let's go back to the graveside plane. <coughs> Choking all around, sort of like that. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Heavens. Let's not die, shall we? Let's not do that. Let's not die. <coughs> Joke is not allowed. Stop that. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Thank you, Sir Afanessa. Sometimes you need people to tell you when to stop. Charles, I'm still around, but waiting for you to answer my other messages on Twitch. Oh. What messages? What messages? I don't see any new messages. There's just Charles wins again, Hazarskis, let's jump to the fireplace, yeah, yeah, let's jump to the fireplace, yeah, yeah, but watch out for burns, the fireplace burnt my love away. That's, that's, that's the last thing I've saw, seen. They already answered. Is that a boss or a mini boss? Definitely a mini boss. We defeated, defeated the furnace. Miniboss for that size? <laughs> yeah. If it's if it doesn't have a name, it's technically not a boss, right? Too big to be just a mini boss. That's what I would expect, but as you can see, there's another one. Well, that's a mini boss. Must be off soon. But before I do, what does our man have to say? Oh, hello, building. Paladin Locke has redeemed the Squid Dance. Very well, Pal Paladin Locke. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, prepare for the worst. For Paladin Locke has just summoned upon you a fate worse than death. No one could truly be prepared for what is about to begin, but I give you the Squid Dance. The Squid Dance, ladies and gentlemen. The Squid Dance! <laughs> there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for that redemption. Have an excellent rest of your evening, Paladin Locke. Please take your sanity pills after seeing such a Lovecraftian horror. But if you're already insane, too bad. Too late for you. You're a squid. You're a squid now, Harry. <clears throat> the eyes are the best fire. Are they? Are they? The languid eyes. Hello, burning dog. I just beat a burning man. I don't need burning dogs. Oh, game. Joop. I just killed a dog that was on fire. Hopefully there's another one so I can show you what I just killed. I'm, I'm normal rolling. Have a blessed rest of your day, Charles and Chad. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a rousing round of applause to Paladin Locke as he leaves the show. Thank you, Paladin Locke, for all of your messages, blessages, 
subscription goodness, and all that you do here in the Federation. We love you. Claps. Claps. Dew gems. Dew gems. I almost called it a dugum. That's not what it's called. Thank you, Sir Afanessa, for the clappages. Hello. Oh. I thought that was a normal person at first. I was like, oh wow. Oh! We don't find normal people in these. in these lands. There's another one. There's another one. I'm scared. Actually, no, he's really bad at what he does. He's dead! Wow, okay, he's wearing somewhat similar armor to, uh... Someone we've seen. Oh. Huh. Chainmail. Blessing of Marika. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Just showing off my blessings. My healing ability. Ow. This guy's a bit more, more uh, aggressive than his friend. Roll! Easy to kill. But they have some interesting abilities. Another mini boss? No, just a mini mini mob. Blam. He's dead. Mesmer Soldier's Axe. Well, well, well. He's a Mesmer Soldier. <clears throat> Mesmer Soldier. It does more damage than the Iron Axe, but... Iron Sword. Ba uh, but... Low Scaling. Oh well. I don't like the scaling. Interesting though, we must read it. Read the lore. Weapon used by the soldiers who serve Mesmer the Impaler. A steel axe worn from use. A favorite of those who lost themselves utterly in their lord's war. Capable of performing powerful charge attacks. Interesting. War cry? Okay. Basic axe ability. Very well. Charles, I am sad. Too many days to wait for the VIC 3 DLC. The last days of wait pass by slower, in my opinion. It's true. It's true. Yesterday passed by very slow as I waited for this game to... Game's DLC to drop. Barely slept last night, although I got better sleep than the night before. I'm glad to be playing it now. It's a weight off my shoulders. But also, I want to play it more. There's a doggy. There's a burn doggo. There's a dead doggo now. Is that another Mesmer encampment? Well, well, well. Let's boil our blood a little bit. And then we shall take them all on. Took mana as well? Here! Oh. Double kill. They're all very sleepy. And very easily slain. Why are they all asleep? Mesmer Soldier's Armor. New armor set, ladies and gentlemen, let's go! Where is it? There it is. Oh, it's very, very light armor. Well, it's medium armor, but it's not... Yeah, it's cool looking, though. I like the cape. Chainmail. Very, um... Very first... First century. Or not first century. First millennium. Can we level now? <clears throat> yes, we can! Oh, my goodness. Our villager redeemed. Wear a fedora. Very well, friend. The fedora is on. Huzzah. Yay, poor doggo. True. <laughs> poor doggo. Let's just take the helmet off. And then we'll wear the uh, most heavy armor we can. On our limbs. Still medium load. Yeah. We'll just wear new armor from the DLC for the rest of it. 
I think. I think that's what I'll do. So, this whole area... The... Mm, item. I see item, I get item. I see ruins, I explore ruins. Oh, that's not an item. That's just gravestones. We're seeing lots of gravestones, we're seeing lots of things that shine, but nothing that's actually an item. Hard to tell. Oh! Church of Consolation. Oh. It's a reference, friends! <laughs> He'd kill these gnats. They're anno annoying. Like the fedora? Cool looking. It, it, it is very cool, isn't it? I love the fedora. Fedora is my favorite type of hat. I do love the top hat and the golf cap, but... I'm a mite bit partial to the fedora. Alrighty. Big shield, Velstat hammer. Here we go. He's a knight. He's a basic knight. Well, I won't call him basic, but he's like the other knights from the earlier game. He has all the poise in the world. He's just as easy as they are. Black Steel Great Hammer acquired. Huzzah! Another mini boss defeated. Interesting. Interesting stuff. This is what I'm excited about. New factions with new enemies. Another Skadoof Tree fragment. I don't know what these do. I don't know why I'm collecting them. I did look at it. I, I still don't know what it does. It's shiny. That's all that matters, isn't it? What if these guys are awake during the day? That'd be really cool. Mesmer gauntlets. They're going to be bad, I can tell. They look cool. Gauntlets worn by soldiers who serve Mesmer the Impaler. Rusted and crusted in filth from fighting in unending war. Rusted and crusted. Armor worn by soldiers serving Mesmer the Impaler. A ragged cloak is draped over rusted mail. Though the chest piece features a scadu tree motif, gold has been used for its engraving. A small consolation to those forced to wage a war without grace or honor. Hmm, without grace. Intriguing. Ha! Uh, chainmail? I like chainmail. Do we have the Great Helm? There it is. More things to wear alongside the Great Helm. I feel that the uh, Mesmer stuff is definitely too rusted and crusted to be worn well with the uh, the Great Helm. So that's off off the docket. I'm glad they have good-looking great armor that um, <clears throat> looks better than the previous black great armor. Never went inside here. I shall destroy your tables of war. That is a floating cup. You ever done a voice recording reading the entire Bible? Um, have I? Have I recorded the entire Bible? I don't think so. It's a lot to record, and... I am very impatient. I've read through the entire Bible on stream twice through. Um, but I've not saved it all. Unfortunately. Yep. 
It's a lot of space, too. Oh no, unfortunately. Lot to save. I, I've done it up through, like, most of Genesis. Put that on YouTube, and then I stopped. Stopped uploading. It was just too much to go through. What? Okay. No sight of grace. I was hoping there would be more to this area. Find. No. Okay, fine. Fine. Ah, well, at least it's turning into morning now. I'm guessing. What was that? Oh. <laughs> Kicked something. Kicked the bucket. Bucket has been kicked. We collect everything I can. All these graves confuse me. I think I'm seeing items and I'm seeing not items. In gra graves. The guy who does the NIVUK version of you version is excellent. I'm sure he is. I am sure he is. Do love an English accent. <clears throat> Still getting over choking on my own spittle. Hello. Someone was waylaid here. Pyreflies. Oh! More mesmers. They probably are the ones who destroyed this. Caravan. <coughs> Caravan. Now they're sleeping next to it. Berserkers. Level 5 smithing stone. Oh, you see a plateau and you think, oh, there's something important up here. Nope. There isn't. No reason to jump on these rocks, either. Well, maybe. Oh! Well, no, there's no reason to go that way. Just go up this way. Another plateau. Not resin. It's very rare, resin. Must be something good that we're able to... ...use that for... Mm. Nothing there. Okay. Yeah, to be honest, from what Miyazaki said, I was expecting a lot more den- Excuse me, game. A lot more density from... From the overworld. As I said, they were going to add way more density than the overworld. What the heck is this? It's making the game lag. A larval tear! That looks different than usual. Why does that look different than usual? <laughs> larval tear. Where do you find where you have your, your tears? Yeah, I wonder why. I, th I think it's it's got to be due to the DLC not being optimized. Must be. Yeah, I don't see the larval tear any anywhere. <clears throat> oh, it's a material? What? A smaller imitation of the Furnace Golem's visage. Material used for crafting items, exceedingly rare to find. Stone mask surrounded by curled horns, depicting the fell god of fire that haunts the sagas of the horn scent. New lore on the fell god of fire. Let's go! Huzzah!
the horn scent. That looks like the same face as on the Dung Eater's armor. Well, maybe not the same, but similar, similar. So this has to do with the omen, and there are lots of horns on this that have been cut off. So that's must, that must be what it's referring to. Fascinating. Fascinating indeed. Have I told you TikTok is coming with, with a picture app of their own? Yes, you have. <laughs> I don't know why TikTok is not enough for them. I guess they need to uh, to compete with Instagram too, and they'll definitely do better than Instagram. Instagram is kind of useless nowadays. There are definitely thousands of people who use it still, but it had cornered a niche that no other website or app had cornered yet. But now that there are so many other social media... Revered Spirit Ash. That's a mummified corpse. Not very well mummified, either. It's also headless. Gives me... Sekiro flashbacks that I don't appreciate. He's also a massive giant. Or was. Well, that's weird. What is that? Revered Ash. Revered Ash. Is that a material too? Everything seems to be a material that we pick up. Bolsters Revered Spirit Ash Blessing. Spirit Ash of those who came before, infused with potent spirituality, acquired from the corpse of horn scent and other objects that ritually decorate townships and villages across the realm of shadow. Consume these at sites of grace to bolster your Revered Spirit Ash Blessing. Whatever that is. The revered Spirit Ash Blessing bolsters both summoned spirits and Spectral Steed's abilities to deal and negate damage, but has no influence outside the realm of shadow. So this is how you uh, upgrade Torrent. I guess. The withered corpses were called tutelary deities, and revered Spirit Ash was said to quietly accumulate in the palms of their hands. And I picked it up. Okay, the Skadu Tree Blessing bolsters the bearer's ability to deal and negate damage, but has no influence outside the realm of shadow. Okay. Huh. Do you dislike what Facebook did to Instagram? Yeah, turned it into a competing social media Th uh, website that tries to do all the same things that Facebook does? Is that is that what you mean? Because I agree on that point. It is said that when the Skadu tree crumbles from its core, that it will scatter across the entire realm of shadow. People of the Earth tree collect the splinters and use them in prayer. Okay, so it's not the Halig tree anymore, it's the Skadu tree. Abominable Skadu tree. Did they beat them, beat them up? I, I, I don't know, Raffinessa. Good question. So you can bolster your spirit summons, which is very cool, and you can bolster yourself. Very cool, too. Oh, I know where we are now. Also, these trees seem to be... important. But I've found nothing important at their roots. So what, what are they there for? Oh-ho! Pentakill! Pentacular. Oh, they drop not resin. That's good. Scorched Ruins. I think Facebook to Instagram di tried to be everything everywhere at all once. That sort of hurts the platform in the long run. Yes. Focusing on one thing and doing it the best out of your compeers. Definitely the uh, more intelligent way to go, but very tempting to want to be all things to uh, all people. 
But once you do that, you lose all identity. This place is a lot has a lot more to it than I thought, but it's definitely not a place you can, like go down into. There's no dungeon or anything associated with it. Hello. Shadow Realm Rune. Neat. Is that the face of the Fell God, too? I have to look at that. Every single scrap of lore we will look at. No, it's not. Golden remnants of the grace bestowed upon those who fell in the Realm of Shadow. Who's shooting me? Trying to stone me like Jesus? Aye. Like the Pharisees tried to stone Jesus. But I'm not Jesus. And you're not the Pharisees, so there. Hmm. Um. Don't get stoned. Okay, I'll try. What is this, Nazareth? What is this, ancient Judea? Not allowed either, no. Stoning, getting stoned, neither are allowed. Both are frowned upon. Wait, I saw an item and I, mm, I'm missing it. Where, where is it? Oh, this does lead somewhere. <laughs> I am foolish. I made quite the assumption. Yeah, I was reading... reading the item. Ad break! Sorry, friends. Skadu tree is the shadow of the Erd tree. No wonder Grace shines ever so brilliantly. What? The Skadu tree is the shadow of the Erd Tree. They banished the Erd Tree's shadow to the Shadow Realm. They did. <laughs> We're in the Shadow Realm. You're happy because your bedroom was cleansed today. Huzzah for purging the evil from your midst. I really wish there weren't so many ads that had to be on my channel. Uh, I'm gonna go get that item. We shall return. Indeed, no more dust here and the fan was also cleaned. Lovely. Good to get the fan cleaned because that can also cause dust to fall down upon you if it's not cleaned. You use it. Oh, good stuff, good stuff. You can breathe easy now. Hello, this place is filled with items, and I didn't even see them all being at night. Kind of helps with that, actually. Yep, I'm sure I can get up here. I'm sure I said. I say, I, I say. Never mind, I guess. I can't. Stop. Stop! Okay. Torrent has a mind of his own. Oh! Well, I'm here now. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> there must be a way. It's obviously not this way. <laughs> not the way I'm trying. Oh, drat. Alright, we have to go all the way across. Hello, lads. Bye, lads. Ow. More stoners. <laughs> There's a new meaning to stoners. Um. There another way in. Skull. With broken runes. Neat. I like that all the runes give you more runes. Than in the overworld. That's pretty good. Helpful.
But again, who are they praying to? Exactly. Who do they believe in? What is your god? Alright, now I can actually see where I'm going. <laughs> the morning breaks. Bizarre visuals, I tell you. And I love them so. I'm gonna get off the horse. Please let me open this door. Yes! Entering. The unknown tower. Chest! Blade of Mercy. What? Is that really a weapon? Mm, I don't think so. Meep! Meep, meep, MC Wolfcat. Meep to you as well. Oh, hi. How do you do, my good mod? I doff my cap in your honor. Tip it in your direction. How do you do, MC Wolfcat? Thank you so much for tuning in this fine day, this fine evening. Welcome to the Shadow of the Erdry DLC playthrough by yours truly. Okay, so that was probably a key item we just found. Right? Maybe? What the heck is this? Mending Rune of Perfect Order can be used to mend the shattered Elden Ring. Did I not already use it? Rune discovered by the Noble Gold Mask. Used to restore the fractured Elden Ring when brandished by the Elden Lord. A rune of transcendental ideology which will attempt to perfect the Golden Order. The current imperfection of the Golden Order or instability of ideology can be blamed upon the fickleness of the gods no better than men. That is the fly in the ointment. Neat. Yeah, so that's the ending that I was going for in this playthrough, and we basically got it. But I did not beat the game with it. We did not see credits. Today is the birthday of a Brazilian writer of great renown, but I'm not really into his books. They are dry, realist literature. What, uh, what is the name? Hi, hi. Doing well, thanks. Glad to hear it. How's you? I'm all right. Had a heck of a day. My father got into a car accident and I had to, um, go pick him up as his vehicle was totaled. So that was, uh, that was shocking. Unexpected. But, uh, all is well. He is fine. And, uh, no, no injuries. But that vehicle is indeed a loss. But, uh, but yeah. Other than that, I'm pretty well. Not bad at all. Let's see. I shall jump, and then... Well, that guts us nowhere. What? How do we get into that... bridge? I don't know. He was a moralist also. Machado de Assis. Machado. He was a moralist also, and he denounced the loose morals of Brazilian society of the day. As I said, realist literature. Well, I, I appreciate that. One must denounce the... Easy morals of evil living. I myself am a moralist and a realist as well. <laughs> if I am to take those definitions quite literally. Our related accidents are always scary. Yeah, I was... Freaking out on the inside. Good evening, Tazib. Good evening. How do you do? Welcome back to the Chill Channel, my friend. Oh, give me up. How do we get that? How do we get that? I bet we go up there and then jump down. I love Torrent. He's so fun. Wee. Pretty easy to do these things with Torrent. All right, now. Here! Got it. We're in. Both romantic and realist school of literature are moralist, but in different ways. True. True. I... 
I appreciate the romantists, the romanti romanticists, but I find I identify more with realism. Romantic, maybe. Romanticist, I don't know. As a Christian, are you ever upset there's no proof of God? There is proof of God, though. Gibbity doo Jimmy. Are you that one guy that I've banned several times in different accounts? Probably. MC Woolcat, you know what to do. You know what to do. I'm glad to hear that you're well to Zeb. Very glad. While Romantic tells how things should be, Realist prefers to be ironic and even confrontational. Yes. Yes. And, you know, I do appreciate both. I myself am someone more... Like, in terms of... So, there's pessimistic, there's optimistic, and I think realist. Right? That's where I am. I'm in the middle. I don't... I don't believe in... Focusing solely on optimism. And the good in this world, or how things... Um should be as if they are that way, but I also don't like to only focus on the cynical and deranged and vile things of this world. There is a balance that needs to be struck, and I think that that balance could be realism. Covering up my head? Yes. Hello? Duck and cover. Friends, duck and cover. Ayn Rand was of a school called Realist Romanticism, which is a middle of the road between the two. She was also greatly invinced, uh, uh, influenced by Victor Hugo. Fascinating that she would, you know, call herself that. I feel like she's more of a nihilist than, than that, though. Because realism is not, like, rejecting any form of morality. Not rebelling against a certain caste. Accepting things as the way they are and dealing with it. Accepting the good and the bad. You know. Ayn Rand is never a nihilist. She is atheist, but she believed in life made sense and had purpose. Well, only because she thought that you make your own purpose in life. She denounced nihilists, but she's closer to a nihilist than than anything Christian. Like, if you if you are an anti if you are anti Christian, if you are um, atheistic, you are a nihilist. Like, there's really no no two ways about it. If you do not believe that there is a higher power that gives life purpose, that has created life for a purpose, then the purpose of life cannot be found because there is only one purpose in life. And we know that through what God has given. So, at least this is coming from a Christian... Christian realist, so... That's the way we think about it. The Sacred Tower Painting. Because the thing is, you cannot give life purpose yourself with, with any meaning that you ascribe to it. Because you can only experience life the way it is presented to you. And the way the life is presented to everyone is the same. You may have different events happening to you in different parts of the world, but as we read in Ecclesiastes today, good and bad happen to all men, and everyone goes to the same exact death. Everyone dies, whether good or evil, and it happens to some sooner than others, happens to others later than some. And there's no getting around that. So what do we conclude? Conclude that without God, there is no purpose. But that the purpose and existence of God is seen in reality. What the heck are these things? Hairheads. Hairheads. And the thing is, like with Jordan Peterson, what he says is, Whatever it is that you say is the purpose of life is the equivalent of God in your life. You do not live... There is no such thing as a, an actual atheist because there is always 
a value system, a priority list, a hierarchy in everyone's life. And if you choose to not believe in the God of the Bible, you're just setting up a different God in your head. Black Hand Blade Acquired. And I think for Ayn Rand, it definitely is the self that is the god. And that, that goes directly against Christianity. Because that's, that's the whole point of pride. That's the whole point of Lucifer's fall. He deemed himself and humans more deserving of what God has than God. He was serving himself. He was being proud. And that is the ultimate sin. To seek our own instead of God's good. Because God is the ultimate reality. God is the one who determines reality. And it is our duty to find out what reality is, discover the purpose of life, and to live by that. If you reject God, we reject purpose. And if we just come up with a different purpose, it's like, well, good job, you've just made up a fiction that is not according to reality. Anyway. All of this is very much proven in the words of others far better than me. The words of Tolkien and the words of Lewis and the words of Chesterton and, and the like. I've been influenced by them. And they were romantics, too. They were romantics. Um, definitely not realists. But... And that's why I say I'm more of a realist, because there are some things of theirs where they get really out there with their assumptions, with their spiritual isms. And I don't really relate to that. Romanticism about... about some things. I think we need to stay grounded in reality. Whereas sometimes C.S. Lewis can get a bit too whimsical for the modern man, you know. And whimsy is something we need to appreciate. I think we need to appreciate C.S. Lewis and, and those writers, but not everyone can relate to that. I myself can, but I see the value in bringing things forward with a lot more level-headedness. If only we can have all the meat IRL that we gather in-game, those sheep look tasty. I know! I mean, honestly, the amount of sheep in the world today is massive, and people eat a lot of meat in other countries. I wish we could eat more lamb in, in here. Shadow Realm Blessing. Two Skadu Tree Fragments to Empower Blessing. Oh. Empowered. Marvelous. Do you think John Piper's view on Christian nihilism is whimsical? Says Burb Watcher. I forget what John Piper's view on Christian nihilism is, Burb Watcher. And welcome to the Chill Channel and to the chat. Congratulations on your first time chat in the channel, Burb Watcher. You'll have to, you know apprise me of the subject, I'm afraid. I like John Piper when it comes to the glorification of God and his um, exegesis of the scriptural history and stories, but um, I think Christian hedonism in the way he, that he brought it across was a bit misguided. Also, I'm not a, a Presbyterian either, so I, I don't hold to most of the Calvinist doctrines, but I do love John Piper. Thank you for the welcome. No, thank you for coming. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I've never heard of Christian nihilism before, honestly. I definitely am no expert. Oh, our stats are yellow now. 
That's interesting. Oh, hedonism. Ah, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I don't think it's whimsical. I think it is... There, there is a basis of truth to it. And that is that we are to seek our purpose, our joy, our contentment from God. But... Seeking, like, satis all of our satisfaction, like, the joy and intellect, like, it's not like we can go into the Bible and enjoy it like we can a steak. Or enjoy it like we can, um, you know, if I thought it were okay to do, like hedonists, smoke and drink and, you know, eat, drink, be merry, and tomorrow we die, right? Like, it's not... <laughs> Like, no matter how much I wish going to the Bible was exciting and enjoyable and prayer was uplifting and edifying and, and just, like, spiritual sensation and glory and happiness, it's not that way. No matter how much I have done it throughout my entire life. However, what I do have from the knowledge of it and from belief in the truths that I have witnessed and the prayers that I've done is contentment in my life hope for the future uh, beyond my death, uh, hope for the future in this life, and an inward joy that is there no matter what I'm doing. Because sometimes reading the Bible is a heckin' pain in my neck. Honestly. Like, sometimes I don't understand it, and there's just no information on the topic in the way that I want it, and I look for it, and it takes a lot of time, and I seem to get nowhere. But... The word is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, and it never returns void, even when we feel like it is, because it is being internalized, it is being read, it is being thought of in the back of our brains. So it's always good to read the word, but it's not always good to seek it like it is a drug. Because I knew a lot of people who read that book and who tried to live that way. And go into monasticism, like Christian, charismatic monasticism. I tried to do that myself. I tried to get into Catholic monas monasticism myself for a while. And what I found is, God doesn't work like that. He's not, in the same way that he's not a dispenser of miracles, as the word of faith would have us believe he is. He's not a vending machine. And he doesn't just give us satisfaction and joy and peace and happiness on the fly when we ask for it, or when we go to him for it. And so to live for the, the enjoyment of Christianity is going for the exact wrong reasons. Um, even going for the sake of contentment is going for the wrong reasons, because while he does give contentment, while he does give joy and peace on the inside from knowing his word, um, we are going to face a lot of oppression and persecution and we're not always going to have spiritual sensation. That's a fact. Even the, the great mystics of our time and of the past have stated that their miraculous experiences were, were but light and fleeting, as glorious and passionate as they were. And their Christianity, their belief, their faith was not based on those experiences or their enjoyment of the scriptures. It was, it was based on the relationship with the person of God. It's like a, a marriage. You're not always, like, if you treat, treat marriage and the marriage bed in the way that John Piper is treating, the like, Christianity Christian in Christian hedonism, addiction happens. Like, schmexual addiction and the relationship is based on, are you fulfilling my needs rather than you know, the, the basis of any relationship, which is love from a pure heart, covenantal relationship, um, being there for the other one, listening to what they have to say, talking to them, you know, living for their benefit. And with us and God, God has given us everything we need for life and godliness. Sacrifice, exactly, Gankali. He has, God has sacrificed his own son and we are to sacrifice our lives for him as well. Every day. Every day we pick up our cross and follow him. And that's not going to feel good to pick up your cross and follow him. 
So, I, I definitely think that hedonism was the exactly wrong word <laughs> to go with for his, his, um, his theolo theologism. Um, I think the point he's coming across with is an important one in that we should seek God for our purpose in life and for some enjoyment. You can get some enjoyment out of the scripture, intellectual enjoyment. You can get a spiritual sense of ex ecstasy from having a revelation, from seeing something you've never so seen before. Um, there can even be inexplicable, joyous, glorious spiritual experiences. But the Bible doesn't promise those. Not once does it say, when you read the Bible, it will give you some massive spiritual experience. Um, indeed, for the most part, it's just, read these letters and follow what they say. Right? <laughs> like Jesus said, Eat my words, drink them, they are the words of life, the water of life. In them you find life. But be not just a hearer of my words, be a doer of them, for only a doer of them can enter my Father's kingdom. So it's, it's not about loving God's word in the same way you love a steak or a burger or anything like that. It's, it's about understanding and, and living them out, obeying the commandments. And thankfully, the commandments have been made incredibly simple by just believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, repenting of our sins whenever we do sin, and trying not to sin. That's it. And trying not to sin doesn't get us to heaven. Um, but it's good not to sin. <laughs> you know? So, anyway. That's a big old, that's a big old thing. And I've, I've, like, that's a big deal because I myself love God. <laughs> I love his word. I, I once considered myself a mystic for trying to experience what the saints and mystics of the past in the Catholic tradition, in the Protestant tradition, from the 1800s back to the 10th century, you know, we're all experiencing in little bits here and there. I have several books from St. John of the Cross, from um, Maria Teresa, from Teresa of Avila, um, Therese of Lisieux, Bernard of Clairvaux, I love their literature, but even they say, you shouldn't expect to have what I have. If you do get it, it's probably because there's something wrong with you, because there's something wrong with me, and God couldn't get hold of me in the way that he can get a hold of you if you're not having the same experiences. So consider yourself blessed that you don't need a miracle from heaven <laughs> to get you to follow him in the way he wants you to. So that's uh, that's my response. I love I love that that idea, and I love the conversation around that. But I do think it's a bit uh, misguided. <laughs> it's about sacrifice. It's not about hedonism. Uh, why should sheep be so expensive? Cannot remember the name of said meat. Mutton, lamb chops. You are very welcome, bird watcher. I've always thought of it as a process, understanding the Bible, finding the answers, finding contentment and everything else. Nothing will be instant on request. We need to grow, need preparation, need to practice faith and patience before we get it. One cannot dig a hole without knowing how to use the shovel. Very true, MC Wolfgang, very true. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Exactly, Kankali. Good response, man. Thank you. No, thank you for the question. Appreciate it. Yeah. Christian nihilism. Now that's something else. I wonder if that exists. I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. Yeah, I, I think nihilism in any form, uh, atheism and nihilism are integrally linked. Nihilism would not exist without atheism. Okay. You, we talked to you though. In what? Battle, you can be sure I'll hold my own. Looks like you could. <laughs> in battle. That's all she has to say. In battle. What is that? What is that accent? Layla Game Zone, greetings and salutations, my good gentlewoman. Oh, hi. How do you do, top hatted fedoralist? I urge you, follow after Mikila. As long as you abide by his footfalls, you will be no enemy to me. He's Irish! I didn't notice that before. Chef, facts. Dr. Plasmus as well. Oh, hi. 
As long as you abide by his. The doctor is in. You will be no Raised two dollars so far. Ah, that's not enough. Ladies and gentlemen, Layla Game Zone is hosting a charity event. For uh, what was it again? Something suicide prevention. Suicide prevention. Go check out Layla Game Zone's channel. Follow if you have the will, subscribe if you have the means, and donate to the ISP. Is it international suicide prevention? Yes. Subject I myself am very much... Is Torrent? I'm very much, um... Uh, how do you say it? <laughs> In support of. Yes. Very nice, Layla. She's doing a charity... Charity streams from now through Monday. Proper a copper. When I say copper, I don't mean policeman. Hello, shadow people. Why do you pray to the White Towers? Am I supposed to be here? Don't attack me. Preemptive strikes. Yeah, I love getting all theological. I, I have my own, you know, opinions and such, and I don't expect everyone to follow them or agree, but I do love talking about it. I should change this, since we're not fighting on horseback anymore. Ooh, nice music. I, I took that off. What is wrong with me? Yes, you lost your brother to suicide last month. I'm so sorry for that. For this day. God bless you. Daily Game Zone. And God bless you for actually taking action. I think most people wouldn't. I didn't. I've lost several aunts and uncles. For the same thing. Ad break. Confounded. I love how they explode with light like that sometimes. That's fun. When the item pops out. I, I... Uh, they seem to be directing me into this direction. But I... I have my doubts about going here first. Oh boy. It's kind of like uh, going up Storm Hill in the overworld. Yes, blessings to you, Layla Game Zone. You and your family. Give you and your family comfort. For the rest of your days. Fuzzy little beings. Anything that can be seen from these precipices? Pre sipes? Pre kips? Pre kipes? Pre chipes? Pre chippies? Pre kips? Oh, I'm fat rolling. That's why I'm not using it. That's right. Great Jar's arsenal is needed. Great Jar's arsenal. Hearts to all. Wow, the sky is red. Reminds me of Kaled, and that is not a good thing. I just avoided the steps. No gargoyle going to attack us on the way up. Oh, another step of Mikola. So we are on the right track, technically. Ooh, who is this? Who this? Who dat? I guess I'll touch it. Carved words coalesce. I abandon here a part of the flesh of my body. So they're just visual flourishes. The item is beneath. Scadu tree fragment. Okay. Good to know. Two new NPCs. What is your face? Are you wearing a mask? I dearly hope you are. Oh, he is. Thank heaven. New step, who dis? 
New step, who this? <laughs> oh, Ansbach. Formerly in service to Lord Moog. Oh, Lord. But now, like you, another soul guided by kindly Mikola. I'm hardly the steady hand I once was. My fighting days are far behind me. Should I slay you? Which is why I have chosen to dedicate myself to investigation. He saved. I'd rather not Oops. volunteer service to a new master unless I know that I can be of use. Okay. May I request a service of you? Yes. Six crosses identical to this one have been discovered in these lands. They are akin to tender Nicholas footprints or gravestones which mark what he's left behind. If you discover any more crosses, be certain to tell me. I presume you, too, are keen to know just what kind Mikola is doing here. What kind Mikola is doing here? Yes, I remember it, uh, the cartoon Gargoyles. I remember it, although I never watched it. I remembered it being on television. Epitome! Greetings and salutations, my good Timothy. <laughs> and gentle person. Welcome in. How's the DLCs thus far? It's good. It's good. It's interesting. There is a lot here. Um, and I have not seen very much of it. Uh, it's cool. There's more of the game. So, And Elden Ring is great. So I'm having a massively good time. Um, slain several bosses. A couple of NPCs and mini bosses. So... Um, Having fun. It is fascinating and weird and um, seems big. Seems very big. A little less dense than I was expecting to be. Thought it would have more content in the in the fields to do, but that's okay. Meeting new NPCs. Pot friend. Hello there. Hello there. Together, we work together for Mikola the kind. Many things. We have found. Not the voice I was expecting. Oh, he's a merchant! He's like, uh, uh, what's his face? What the heck? All of this is new. Sealed Spirit Springs. A note found by the Forger Brood. Contains information about Sealed Spirit Springs. Further details are available only to paying customers. Yeah, you know I gotta buy that. Obtained. Going into lurk mode. Enjoy the lurkage, MC Wolfcat. Meep. Wasn't allowed to watch it. Oh, really? Yeah, I need to watch it. I've, uh, I've put it off for a long time. Nice. I may play Elden Ring Bloodborne version. Ooh, do you mean, uh, Blood Build Elden Ring? Or do you just mean play Bloodborne instead of Elden Ring? <laughs> do tell, Epitome. I am intrigued. Blood Flower with Meaty Petals. Ugh. That's about demons. You're not watching it. That was my parents too, Layla. We have a lot of in common in terms of how we were raised, I think. Not a bad thing to do, but still. Better to not be ignorant about what your children want to watch before telling them they can't watch it. Perhaps even the fiends admire blood's beauty. Blood fiends. Grown by blood fiends in pools of blood. Perhaps even the fiends admire blood's beauty. Okay. Sanguine Amaryllis. Amaryllith. I guess I'll purchase it. Well pickled turtleneck. Do we find more turtles to pickle? Turtleneck meat that has been thoroughly pickled in a bitter solution temporarily grants large boost to stamina recovery speed. So a better boost. Nice. Nice. Pad Bay is redeemed. Wear a top hat. Thank you, Pad Bay, for the top hat redemption. The top hat is on. Thank you very much, Bad Bay. Good to see you. Welcome in. Hope you're having a fabulous Frabjus follow. Same here, Burb. Burb Watcher. Nice. Nice. Just play Bloodborne. An excellent choice. I think I should finish that game first. My brother and I share a family stream's esteem, so his games become my games and vice versa. He's into the Souls series, so he'll be busy with the Red, the ER DLC in the next little while. Won't be able to play it while he's playing it. Oh, I see. Well, that works. I can love the top hat. Thank you, I'm glad. So do I. Doing great today. Praise Jesus. I'm so glad to hear that. You, I'm okay. I, uh, I'm having a very good day, but uh, my father got into a car accident and I had to go 
interrupt the stream and drive over there and pick him up because his car was totaled. So that was, uh, that was scary, honestly, not knowing how he was going to be. But he is well, he is fine, nothing wrong with him, not in pain, everything's good. But, uh, yeah, that was, that was, uh, that was adrenaline pumpingly bad. <laughs> A sudden emergency. Don't want that to happen, but, uh, but all's well that ends well. Thank God he, nothing, nothing worse happened. So sorry to hear about that. Yeah, no, no worries. Just lost a car. Praise God, glad to hear your dad's good. Thank you, Bear Watcher. I'm glad too. <laughs> he was, uh, he was out, you know, talking to the, and, and laughing and joking with the policeman and tow truck guy and all that, so he's, he's just fine. But yes. Well wishes and prayers are very much appreciated. For my father, I hope uh, there's no, you know, remaining issues that will show themselves that we're not seeing right now. Sometimes car accidents have a, a way of doing that, having an impact that we can't really feel at the moment. We'll pray against that, and hopefully nothing bad will happen. Amen and amen. Did slash is he still going to get checked out by a doctor? Not me, because even if he seems okay, yeah, just what you just you said, yes. We're we're trying to get him to, he doesn't want to. He's the type that's like you know, unless I'm dying, I'm not going to the doctor. Type of person. We can prevail against him, but it takes a lot to uh convince him that he needs to. So we'll see how he feels. If he feels something is wrong, he will go himself. But uh, he, he needs to get a checkup, man. I don't know. There could be some internal damage that he can't tell, and that's that's always a problem. But you know, we'll 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 make him do it. I know that's what happened to me right after one of my own accidents, uh, rear end accidents. I've been rear ended it twice uh, and whiplash, and uh, I have a stretch mark where my spine was. I I bent over it because I got hit so hard. It was Bam! And then my spine stretched. And you can see the stretch mark on my back. Afterward, I was about, what, 13 years old at this time? And, uh... And so, you know, the ambulances came and got my father and my mother on a stretcher and they looked at me and I was walking around like, well, what's going on, you know? And they looked at me and they, they checked my eyes and all that and they're like, you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I feel fine. Feel good, actually. Everything. See, are my parents okay? You know, and and uh, the rest of the day, I felt great. No problems. No effects for weeks, months, uh, year after. But a couple of years later, I've been having back pain and neck pain and shoulder pain and head like migraines. And <laughs> in fact, it was that year later on that I started having migraines. So, you know. I, that that's that's my experience. Ack indeed. Yeah, I have a stretch mark. <laughs> so at the time, everything fine. Year or two down the road, trauma. But uh, my father says he didn't hit anything. He didn't run into the the door or get hit in the face with the the airbag. So hopefully, such things will not occur. Okay, time to read about livers. Animal liver pickled in a blue medicinal solution. Temporarily grants large boost to magic damage negation, greatly improving damage mitigation against attacks imbued with magic. The effects of the forager's broods pickled delights are enhanced by the fermentation, or rotting, of the ingredients. Though this results in a pungent odor, some come to find the aroma irresistible. Liver is nasty, Layla Game Zone, I agree. I'll eat it if it's in something else. But if you if you can taste it, I, I'm, I'm you're already doing something wrong. Uh temporarily grants large boost to fire damage negation. We could have used this against those other guys. Everybody agrees. Agreed, agreed, agreed. I'm glad we are all agreeable here. The effects of the forager's broods... Oh, I read this, yeah. Pungent. 
pungent. Only the pungent man may pass. Greatly increasing damage mitigation. Imbued with holiness. Holy pickled liver. <laughs> Holy pickled liver, Batman! <laughs> Alright, black firefly. I've not read this. Butterfly with black cinder wings. Material used for crafting items. Flies in war-torn lands that have been scoured by Mesmer's flames. They burn in dark and slender ribbons of fire. So I was hearing people say that there is no specific fire butterfly, flame butterfly, that is a reference to a specific god, whereas all the other butterflies in the main game reference specific god or demigod. Oh, blessing of Marika. It's like a divine blessing. How funny. I added it to the game, finally. Um, so, people were saying, the flame butterfly is Mesmer and Mikola combined. I was like, no. It's, it's separate. It's different. There's a Mesmer butterfly now. Fire coil uses FP to conjure a tiny fire snake. What? Never, never seen this. Device of fire used by Mesmer's soldiers. Ah, I see. Turkey heart is delish, though. I won't disagree with you. I don't like most, um, guts. What do you call them? Um, organs. Most organ meat I'm not a big fan of. But, again, if it's in a thing, such as, uh, fixings. I'm okay with it. Awful? Yeah, awful is awful. Yeah, yeah, awful is another word for it. It's not the word I was looking for, but yes. Awful. Accurate. True. The wo Another word for it. Awful. Awful, awful. Awful is awful. Talk to more again. I like finding things for you, Lady Ledder, her allies. And the forager brute. Things bring joy to all. Cute. He's cute. I like for you things. Things. He likes things. Huh. Goodbye. 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 He's just a cute little baby. Cute little baby boy. Ever had blood sausage? I, mm, I think I have. I don't remember what it was like. Dr. Plasmus. If I remember correctly, I had it at an, an Irish pub, and it was alright. I don't, I don't, I don't remember anything about it. Like, I don't remember the flavor, or I don't remember having a reaction to it, I don't remember liking it or disliking it. Tangy. Okay. Huh. Must return to your stream. God bless you and your stream and your charity event, Layla Game Zone. God bless and Godspeed. Applause for Layla Game Zone as she leaves the show. We love you. <sighs> Hope you have a very excellent rest of your evening, Layla. God be with you in all of your dealings. Who's that? That is Bird. No! Almost kicked that skull. Off the cliff. The cleft of the rock. What are these pillars for? There's no... Ceiling. That's definitely a reference to... Solomon's Temple, isn't it? Gotta be. You can't have pillars holding nothing without it being a reference to Solomon's Temple. <laughs> I guess. Uh, the invisible footstool of God. For heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Say the Lord. Where is the house you will build for me? All these things my hand has already built. Speaking of temple, in we go, I guess. I'm scared there's going to be a boss in here. 
I may indeed go back and upgrade my steel sword, my moonlight steel sword. Also, just a ton of different folk on this door. And really see. Shinzo Sasageo! <laughs> Is that an Attack on Titan reference? Oh man, uh, someone has to reveal the meaning of these hieroglyphs to me. They're not hieroglyphs, but... I wonder who they are. The soldier? Uh, maybe a priest? Workman? Laborer? noble. Onwards! Onwards, Christian soldiers. This is lit- Oh my gosh! Stop! No! <laughs> uh, no. 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 <laughs> oh gosh. Oh, dear Lord in heaven, help me. Oh, okay. Uh, hmm. First time I had it was at the medieval fair. One of the stands was selling dishes based on creatures like vampires, werewolves, dragons, and so forth. Ah, uh, that's clever. That's clever. It is really medieval food. Um, I don't. I don't think I hate it. I don't think I love it. I had it. That's all I can say. It reminds me of the, uh, the butcher, um, meat that you could buy from the Diablo 4 event. That was funny. Um, oh gosh. I don't want. I don't want. <laughs> ah, burn it with fire. Um, heavens. I may just burn it with fire, if I can. Ooh, explosive stone clumps. Explode when thrown together, inflicting fire damage. I like the sound of that. Yeah, I'm going to buff the, the heck out of myself. Boost physical attack. Boost this, boost that. Fire coils. Whatever I can get. Prawn. Time to eat! Rick. I was going to say that... Oh, this place is literally just... The cathedral. From... from ah! I hit it. Doesn't like fire. Ah! Oh my god. Oh my gosh. That I cannot handle. But I handled it. Charles wins again! Oh! 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 He just wants a hug? <laughs> just be a cater, a ease. Fire worked, it did. But Charles, how can you boost the heck out of yourself? You have none in you to begin with. Oh, thanks for saying that, Dr. Plasmus. That's very kind of you. What is on the floor? No! Not more! The children! Think of the children! I don't want to. Burn it. Kill them. Kill them all. Um. Yeah, that works. They're spider scorpions, man. That is not okay. <laughs> wow. Look at this fellow. Look at this kindly faced fellow. What an omen. Oh, man. Not the younglings. Yeah, it's very uncomfortable to look at. I have... I have some, uh... 
<laughs> Arachnophobia, so that's that's bad. That's bad. That is not okay. I hope that's the last one in the game. Yes. Surely. Wow, look at all these reliefs. Relieve the release. Release this face. Reliefs. Can't see what they are depicting. Just processions of people upon people and an omen headed man. Moog? Perhaps? Surely. I have an arachnophobia story. Oh no, it's going to be one of those nights, in it, isn't it? Where everyone just relates terrible spider stories. Oh boy. Oh dear. Oh, it's uh, <laughs> Matrix Reloaded. Get the sword. Oh, gosh. it's not Matrix Reloaded. I prefer <gasps> okay, there are two ways to take this. Oh my gosh, there are two ways to take this. Number one, it's just a reference to Buddhism. Right? The self-mummifying monks. Fair. Number two. This, literally, these are demon souls. Immortals. Oh, what? Why are you here? Oh, there's more. What? Oh. Gosh. Who? Um. They're on the ceiling, aren't they? Didn't notice. <laughs> no! Okay. Let's. Um. I agree, like the way. I know. Need a flamethrower. I can th flow thread. Oh, there's another one. <sighs> that works wonders. Hey! Gosh, dang it, man! I had for proof dried liver. Why are they giving me that? Okay, here it is. Me and my mother were walking through the park. We have a very nice public garden in my town, and we were walking under a tree when I see my mother swing her arm up and backwards right toward me. Oh, snap. Ooh. Okay, they don't have very much health. The legs and the fur. Oh. There's an erd tree in the shape of DNA strand. Yes. <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> I was not expecting this. Oh, the fire is out already. Oot! Are we out? There is a sight of grace. What's going to jump in and kill me? Omen lions. Oh, I know what we're about to face, I'm sure. Are you going to finish that story, Dr. Plasmus? Or leave us in suspense. Shadow Realm Blessing. Nice. Ash Blessed. Hello, Shadow Man. Yeah, what I'll try to do is take off the cape and see if this is light enough. Yeah, we can make a Mesmer soldier uh, uh, altered version, variant. I need a caped and uncaped version of everything, if I can. 
Slightly worse, but... Better silhouette. <clears throat> this woman. This woman launches a spider the size of a cutie orange right into my face. Oh, gosh. Well, I bat the thing off me after having a moment of panic, and it's... <laughs> I let out a scream that, to quote the staff that came running in response, sounded like a small girl screamed bloody murder. Yeah, I would too. I would too. Yeah. Scary, scary thought is the inhalation of breath when panicking at a spider being hurled at your face as it goes right into your mouth. That's my first thought. <laughs> as horrible as that is. That's a door. Does not open from this side. Curses! That's a big spider. Wait. Oh. That's not the way to go. We'll go into the narthex. We're going right underneath the veil. You'll just run in here like nothing's wrong. You're large, sir. Did you know that? Well, I wasn't thinking that, but I am now. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I just have to bring everyone down with me, don't I? You have the munchies? Have you been doing the weeds? You know, oh! You get munchies? Or, you know, LSD, things that give the munchies. No weeds. See, I was sitting here like a, like an idiot. Think, well, ad break. Thinking that munchies were specific to 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 the weed is the weeding in the weeding in isn't. Hi right, guys. Can I take what you are? Oops. Well, now he's my enemy. Somber smithing stone. I actually I can just. It's fine. Silver horn tender. What the heck is that? This reminds me of the. Uh, Magic area. What is that liquid? No, God forbid, I just have been avoiding cheat day for far too long. I see. I put this off for far too long. Understandable. See, before I was made aware of drug culture, druggy culture, hippie culture, I would have thought munchies just was like, you're peckish. You know, in, in the British terminology, just hungry. Slightly hungry. But, uh... That's, that's apparently more specific to, to the weeding... The, the weed is... Or oh, so I've been told. Thought it's fun to do. <coughs> yeah. No weeds being eaten here. Getting chips and chocolate. Ooh, that goes well. Together. Sweet and salty. Join me, Charles. We'll hotbox in my car. <laughs> we'll turn on the heat and start punching each other. Yeah. <laughs> I know what that is. No, I do. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Fills the car with smoke. The eye was ready to get the boxing gloves on. Uh oh. Who's that behind me? Nobody? This is a much larger area than I was expecting. That moment you spent all evening hyping yourself up for a fight and bro just wants to sit and smoke. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mesmer fire grease. That's a new thing, too. Better fire? Thank you for the fabulous Freb just follow, Eins En. Hello. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. How do you do, Eins? 
Ein Zulgaun. You remember me? No. Different name, right? It says first time chatter, so... I can't say that I do. My apologies. You approach my car after I say that. Get in and see I'm just grinning spicy case. It is. Ah, hot box. Hot. As in spicy. I see. Ah, I see, Einzien. Well, I must say, you have a much better name now. No idea how I would have, uh, known that was you. <laughs> uh, but welcome back to the Chill Channel of Charles. For the first time. Everything with you is spicy? I do love spicy food, I do. My parents hate it. My whole family hates it. My, my brother doesn't hate it, but he doesn't actively seek it out. So I, I kind of have this sort of neutral feeling towards it. What the heck is a silver horn tender? I must look. Another material? No. A consumable item. Old currency used by horn scent. Made by coating spiral horns with silver. Temporarily boosts item recovery. A better form of pickled fowl feet? Well, well, well. Temporarily boosts item discovery. It can also be sold for a high price. These trinkets were once symbolic of society's upper echelons. No. So the omen were once high society. And then the Golden Order came and put them below the sewers. Fascinating. Don't do weed. I do read. Ooh, ooh, ah, ee, ah, oh. <laughs> ow, 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 woo. Still enjoy your content. Thank you for saying so, Einzien. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I enjoy you saying that. I enjoy you praising me. Praise me more. Praise me. Praise me. Uh, how foolish are you to trust me with your father's email? <laughs> <laughs> uh, just that in the chat is so funny <laughs> without context uh. <laughs> uh. all caps you are amazing no you are amazing Eins. oh boy Glad to have you back. And your compliments. I will take them. Water sips. Well, now that I'm not fighting spiders, I feel a little bit less on edge. Wait, wasn't there a boss fight there? Do you remember? I do. I do remember your name. It has been quite a while. Since that name, the unmentionable name, was in the chat. Hey! <laughs> Ned, tain mail at not a domain. Dot spaz. Hello? Another locked door. Where am I? I'm in a whole, a whole new world. Can I? No, I cannot. We're in a dungeon. We're in the dungeon. Uh, okay. I'm gonna go back now. Because, uh, I'm making too much progress. Whoa, this guy is coming quick. I love this sword. You were lost in the desert, and I'm glad that you have been found. The Prodigal Sun! Face does feel a lot like a dark capital does. Ah! Wow, they are much more aware of me now. And they do damage! Oh, oh, oh no! Oh! Heal. Not iced? Oh no! That's a lot of damage, man. Why? Why? Oh, we're heavy load again. 
That's why. Well, we can heavy load it. It's a heavy load. Spin to win. Whee! Okay. We're getting somewhere. After the stinking fat roll. Wait a minute. This is lighter than this? I guess it's the material that matters, not the shape. <clears throat> hmm. Okay. You can always wear the Crucible Tree Armor. It's pretty neat. Hmm. I wish the Knight's Cavalry Armor were better. Sad that it isn't. But, yeah, I'll wear it anyway. It's the, it's the best looking stuff that we have. Use, use that same Ash of War on my scythe. Good main wep hand weapon for my cast and slash. Yes, cast and slash. I want to upgrade my Steel Moonlight Greatsword that we got from the DLC. See what that feels like. Do you know where I am from? Germany? Is, is Am I misremembering? Let me know. Yes! Yes, I remember. I remember you. I remember you now, Eins. Already did, but now I'm pretty sure on who you are. More sure than ever before. Oh. Kind of a... Um, yeah, an Arabian feel combined with the... Uh, oh, it's like Hellenistic. Uh, yeah, like Middle Eastern, Middle Eastern Greek, but with also steeples and triangles. <clears throat> no domes, which is bizarre in architecture. Oh, there's the, okay, so there's the Godwin reference. Did you jump? I slice you. I slash you. Nice. Yeah, I love the frostbite in this game. It's so good. Frostbite and bleed are the best. I would prefer to use blood. Bleed, I mean, but, uh... We'd have to focus more on arcane. I didn't want to, uh... Have to get rid of my strength. In order to use that. There must be some kind of reference here. Oh, yes. They're like grave sight candles for the dead, right? I bet at the top of that we'll find a body decaying at the top of the waterfall. How big is this DLC, or do you know? I've been told it's the size of Limgrave in the uh, overworld of Elden Ring. I don't know if that tells you anything, but I really don't know. Nobody really says. Uh, says. Um, but they say Limgrave, 30 to 40 hours. Which is quite good, because I paid 30 to 40 dollars on this game. <laughs> Specifically 40. Ah, we can see the... Oh! Ooh! We can actually see the layout of the city on the map. That is delicious. That is delish. That is delish. Delicious. That's delicious. No roofs to keep us from being able to see things. I was going to go backward, but it doesn't seem like there's a lot more places to go here. Oh! Jumping on the roofs and jumping onto houses. 
Hopefully not missing anything. This disturbs me. Hey, Gutaz. Boy, 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 Oh. Wait a minute, what is that on top of there? Oh, it's another bird. We can deal with birds. Can we not? This place looks way larger than it actually is. Like an old western town layout. Surprise, nothing else on these rooftops. Huh. Okay. Okay. Been told the people who want to rush through it can get through everything in about 25 hours. Folks like Charles, more around 40. Exactly. Exactly. You know how it is. You know how it's gonna go down with me. Please. No! Why locked? Every door to me is locked. Why? Um... Uh, birdie. Birdie. Also, Ken Collie? Did you always have that top hat? Or was that recently... granted to you? I'm confused. That's some good DLC. Wow, I agree, Burb Watcher. I could I could probably eke out way more <laughs> hours out of this than 40, honestly. With the amount of staring at, at art and things, trying to understand the lore. Frog faced fellow. Fatherly patriarchal figure with a scepter. And they're actually doing the sign the the, 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 the the sign of the cross. Resubbed. Well, welcome back to the Federation. I don't know if I ever told you that, but welcome back to the Federation, Kangale 99. Holding a book and doing the sign of the cross. The Christogram. Wow. There are crosses in this game now, DLC-wise. Maybe there's more direct Christian references. Uh, now I'm on the floor, I don't know where to go. There is a well. That's right. Well, well, well. Let's over-examine this broken wagon. Exactly, Doctor. Ah, snap. Another... Another sewer filled with bodies. It's locked, too. Locked out of everything. At least these guys don't one-shot me. Wow, <laughs> there is literally nothing down here. Except for a mesmer fire. I didn't read that, so let's read it. Sewers and bodies go hand in hand. Apparently. Solidified knot grease made from a mixture of incendiary materials. Craftable item. Coats armament adding heavy fire damage to attacks. The effect lasts only for a short time. I was a symbol of the crusade. The burning crusade. Is that a wow reference? Even Mesmer's rank and file soldiers would wield it. Fires of the Crusade. The Last Crusade. Indiana Jones reference? How are you doing, my brother? John Deeds. Welcome back, John Deeds. Oh, hi. Mr. Deeds. Good to see you. It's been a long time indeed. Sashiburi desune. I'm okay, but not 100%. Keep me in prayer. Will do, John Deeds. Father God in heaven, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray for John Deeds. Whatever he needs, that you would provide according to your riches and glory. You would bless him and keep him, strengthen him, adorn him with your power, and fill him with your spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Huzzah. 
Prayer for John Deeds. Another sewer filled with bodies. Ah, feels like home. The old familiar places. I'm surprised that that didn't lead to anything more. Amen, Burb Watcher. Amen. <laughs> Definitely relate to the algae-filled fountains. We have to clean those out at our house. Oh! All the time. That got me. Have you in prayer all this weekend? Thank you! I need it too. Of course we all do, but we all have our own specific things we need prayer for. Well, it's probably a shortcut for later. Yeah, yeah. Unlockable door. So true. You are so right. Alright, time to open this door if we can. We cannot. <laughs> okay, good to know. Charles, I hope you're having a blessed day, friend. I am now. Thank you. Another shortcut area. Yeah, this is... Okay. Almost leet in the numbers of runes. We are getting a lot of runes, so actually grinding in the DLC is... Uh, is, 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 is that's going to be a viable option. Hope you're having a blessed day, Dodge the Ram. Welcome back. My father dodged dying in an accident today. Thank God for that, too. Uh, -ba -da -ba -da. So that was a little nerve-wracking, but uh, he's doing well. He's doing well. But yes, my, as for myself, I'm doing well, too. Feel good. Outside of my back pain. Which is abnormal. I'm feeling abnormally good today. Yikes, glad he's okay. Me too. Oh my gosh, it's a... Oh, he was in the promotional material. Uh, he's gonna do... Continual combos that I can't get away from. Yep. I'm half dead already. Oh, he can get through the door. And he has no poise. Breakage. Brrrt. Nyah. Nyah. No! Come on! Finally. Whew. Nice armor, though. Nice armor. That was a lot. Uh, wow. That dude just Zoro slashed. Yeah, <laughs> you could say that. Ugh. That was a lot. So, hold on. We went that way. We went on these roofs, found diddly squat, and now, yeah, there's a shortcut. We go upward. Ever onwards, ever upwards. Excelsior, wrong way. Excelsior, upwards. Yes. Lots. Weeping willows. I knew. I knew. Uh, I knew things. Oh! I didn't know about you, but I should have. Every single door, every corner, there will be an ambush. It's from software, after all. Don't forget to upgrade your moon sword, as you said earlier. Yeah. I am... Eek! I did not know. I do not. No! Oh, I'm going to throw myself off of the... Pocahontas! Ah! I'm dead. That could have gone better. Uh. <laughs> uh. Alright, I think, well, we need to go back and get our runes, which means we're probably, yeah, we have to fight this guy again. No combos until we are in this 
sights. Hey! Wow. Stop! He's a bit slow in between attacks. Ooh. Summoning pool. I thought there was an item. No, it's not. Whoops. And where's my stuff? Give me my stuff back. I'm going to be attacked from above. I can feel it. No? Well, I see that guy up there. I can't reach him from here. Can I? See my runes. Well, we can go up here. That's no consolation. Hello, though. You get a consolation prize of thin beast bones. Thank you. Ah, they're cannibalists. Is he eating pyreflies? Weirdo. Face first into the poo poo water. <laughs> yeah, where is that coming from, and where is it going? Um, can't reach him. Need longer weapons, man. Only good thing about the spear playthrough was the range. Spears are awful in this game. I hope they give us a new spear that's better. <laughs> oh my! He has some range too. And of course I do not. Hi! Was the ambusher now, this time? Haha! Hee ho ho! Hee ho ho! Here! So, okay. We've gotten a couple of recipes. What can we actually craft? We can craft a lot, but a hefty fire pot! Boat enemies to inflict severe fire damage. That's new. That is definitely new. Anything else? Ah, oh, we can craft these finally. Bewitching branches. Hmm. What else uses sacramental buds in Mikola's lilies? I don't know, but I'll make five of these. Okay. Yeah, there's not much more we can craft. Need more foul feet. Pappy! Hello. <clears throat> uh, yes. Picking strips. Need an avocado. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Are they made? Oh wow. Food is ready, friends. Food is ready. Got another smithing stone. I didn't die this time. Look at that. Look at that. So yeah, it's coming from the sewers. So yeah. Very fecund. What in heaven's name am I looking at? Looking at flies. The flies. Oh! Got through it. It's Dark Souls 3 all over again. Except these ones have human heads. Of course they do. Get over here. Oh my gosh! <laughs> that guy had the drop on me. Well, I won't be ambushed by those if I can... Or... Segmented bodies. Flies in the ointment. Flu, 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 shoe, fly, shoe. However that goes. I, I see they've reused assets from Dark Souls 3 all over the place. 
Like, this is a room from Dark Souls 3, the layout and all. Even the broken, broken floor. Storeroom key. Uh, what of the 50 million doors does that open? That we've been to. I'm happy because while the game is very difficult in the DLC so far, it's it's not nearly as hard as I was expecting. Yet, yet, yet. More shrouds. Birds. MK Ultima. Charles Q. Banks. Oh, they throw fire. That's not fair. Only I should be able to do that. Stop it! Wrecked. Welcome, MK Ultima, my good red bow tied fedoralist. How do you do? You two are lost in the DLC. Lost in a good way, or lost in the I can't find where to go way. And that could be d good as well, depending on who you are. Who you ask? Elevator! That's probably a shortcut. Hopefully. Also, like, 80 levels over the recommended 150. Oh, there was a recommended 150. See, I was told that... Oh, gosh. No! No! Oh, no. All right. Burn it with fire. They're slow, little puppies. That's good. Excellent. Beat these things. Ugh. Yeah, I was told that leveling, over-leveling, would not overpower you. That the DLC had its own power-leveling system that negated over-leveling. Is that not true? Because if it's not true, I'm a happy baby boy. Filled with joy and gladness in my soul. Um, yeah, okay. I knew. I knew such things would happen. Is this also a reference to Demon Souls? It has no health. That's good. And it does no damage. Oh no! There are two of them! Are you the wifey? Oh snap, I over it. Oh no. I'm poisoned. Ow! They both have tails. Okay. I'm thrashing my own throat. Bone bow. A new bow. Buno. I think I'm level 205. 232 or something like that. A little bit of an exaggeration, but in the same ballpark. 205. 205. Um. Yes. Not too far. Not too far away. From the truth. From the truth of the matter. Miss Red, I'm at 167 and still getting my bonus kicked. Bonus. I don't know why I thought I must censor that. Not the butts. Anything but the butts. Well, okay, I'm glad I don't have to go further up here. I don't want to meet the children anymore. Those are not puppies. Okay, let's, let's not be green. I love green, but it's not that green. Was there no reason to go in there? Alright. Bakuki! Getting kicked in my bakuk. <laughs> I'm sure that means something terrible in another language. The bakukas. I've never been here. Never in my- oh. Never mind. Get old from softy and checkpoints. Green with envy. Okay, I need to take a break and get myself some dinner, and I shall return after these quick messages because I want to continue playing this game. Okay, I'll be right back. Thanks for watching. I love you. So, 
We continue. Oh, the choirs have kicked in. Didn't notice that. Another fallen kingdom. How many of those can exist? In one game. Ketchup and mayo? No. Charles Bookworm, welcome back to the chill channel of Charles. Oh, hi. How do you do? How could you have guessed it? However. However. Have you been, Old Bookworm? I mean, it was pink, so there are only so many options. It could have been not that. You could have guessed wrong a couple of times for my benefit. Okay, Scor Scor Scorpion Liver. What? We can collect those? And we can also collect octopus ovaries, so I guess that's nothing new. Um, where is it? There it is. Spider scorpions. They're called spider scorpions because, of course, they are. Fresh organ of a spider scorpion, referred to as a liver, but no one is quite sure of what it's of its purpose. Material used for crafting items found by hunting spider scorpions. A delicacy known for its numbing toxins. I think I know what it's used for. <laughs> I think it's used in its tail venom. Oh. Mayo and spicy brown mustard is also good. True. True. You can add mayo to in almost any other sauce, and it can turn out all right. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's like the best thing ever, but I do quite enjoy. I do quite enjoy mayo itself and ketchup. Dividing those things together, tasty. Hmm. Far less avenues of progression than I would have expected so far in this dungeon, but not done yet. Let's just jump off and hope all things go well. Mummy fly, people. Can't say I'm surprised. Oh, it's not poisonous. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Miyazaki. Poison is elsewhere in the DLC. Stanching boluses. Do they cause bleed buildup like the flies in DL th the Dark Souls 3? No, they cause poison. Of course they do. But there's not a poison swamp yet, so I'll, I'll take what I can get. How is Geralt of Rivia doing in the DLC? He's doing quite fine, honestly. Uh, the damage could be a bit higher, but I think he's doing quite well for himself. Charles, a personal thought question. Personal thought question. Go with it. Go after it, my friend. Ask away. I won't be offended, and if I am, I will let you know that I am offended, very offended, at whatever you have said. So ask away. Broken rune. Ah! Of course they have a grab. Let me go! Ah, well, I got tuckered out by that. That's funny. Fly mold. Even more disgusting things.
That's got to be immaterial. Don't tell me we eat it. Okay. <laughs> Hunting manflies. Speci species. A species of fungus known for its deathly sweet stench. Material used for crafting items, found by hunting manflies, cultivated using the flesh and blood of manflies. It can serve as pot innards. Okay. I can make pot. This is what you are telling me. I was getting a drink when this thought came about. Do you think if Jesus was walking among us today, he would like video games and the stuff people create along the like? Um, I've thought about this, and... I think he would like some and dislike others, just like any other human being, and as we know, God likes some things and likes others, so that that answers the question. I'm sure he had his preferences with what kind of wine or drinks he enjoyed, with what kind of food he enjoyed, so why not with video games and etc. It's not like, and I, I have thought about this as well. There are definitely some very harsh and judgmental fundamentalist groups in the Christian tradition that are like, all video games are evil, all television is evil, but Jesus didn't come decrying all of art and literature and, and this or that genre. He didn't even touch on the idea. He just said, honor God, love one another, follow my commandments. I think he would like Stardew Valley. Ah. Maybe. Let's see. What did Jesus like? He ate a lot of fish. And he offered fish. So I think he would fish in any MMO that he ever played. If he ever played an MMO. I think he would like one with fishing in it. Maybe fishing simulators. He'd be a fishing simulator gamer. Very agricultural Jesus. Oh yeah. Yeah, farming simulators too. Maybe. I got destroyed. These guys remind me of something. Champion Gundir. He's back, ladies and gentlemen. Champion Gundir is back. Hmm. I do wonder what his thought pattern would be on violent video games. It's not obvious to me that he would be blatantly against them, but may he have a distaste towards them, or would he like certain ones of them, depending on the morality of the of the fighters involved, you know? I don't know. It's a question. Hey! I definitely believe that God completely understands man's propensity to fantasize about fighting. Obviously, the Apostle Paul also took, speaks of fighting the good fight of faith. And Jesus said, I am not come to bring peace but a sword, a division. And when he returns, he will be a man of war. Riding a war horse and beheading the evil, wicked kings of the world. Yeah, it just depends. From, uh... From one... one video game to another, you'd have different references. But I'd like to know, you know? So, <laughs> that'd be helpful. <laughs> Can you give me your list, Jesus? Of what your favorite games are, maybe I can, you know, you know, affix my own preferences around those. But he didn't do that. That'd be too easy. 
so I thought I could just turn left. But, um... Not that easy. Was there someone from behind that came up upon me? There might be. Why don't you die? Why don't you die? Oh, speaking of... Let's go back to the round table hold. See if we can't level up the steel sword. Yeah, power wash sim. I think in that process, like this game for example, while he would not enjoy playing a violent video game himself, I think he would enjoy games where people fight to save people or prolong good, yeah. Well, it depends. I, I, like, I, and that's what I don't know. Because there is definitely, in every game, the fight for good and evil. Like, how would he feel about Street Fighter? I don't think he'd feel good about the objectification of women. Um, the competition in pride involved. Wow, Marika is not looking so hot. Um, could be that way, but who knows? Maybe he would be more uh, for that than than something like this. But on the other hand, this also is fighting of good against evil. Fighting against, um, you know, sort of uh, governmentalized religion that uh, that wields the sword against its own people, which God is also against. So it depends which perspective you take on it, as to the morality of God. The way you see God is the way you see his interest in video games. Like, it would be very easy to just say, oh, he likes all games that are about peace and kindness and friendliness and happiness and cute things and only things that, you know, engender loving others and goodness. But there is a lot of fighting in the Bible, a lot of killing of one's enemies. I think that's something God earnestly wants to do every day. I mean, it says it. God hates and strives with and rages against the wicked every day. So, uh, we cannot completely put that out of hand. And I think this is the deal. I don't think God, Jesus, would be super into any particular video game, like, super much. I think he appreciates that we like them. Uh, and he may have some preferences, but I don't know, but I think he would enjoy that some of us enjoy them. And some games, maybe even this one, would not survive in his perfect kingdom, you know. So, I don't know. Then there are also games that let you choose the morality of your path. He would probably get behind that. Maybe. But on the other hand, if you can choose him an immoral path, would that be a game he avoids? Because you can choose the evil, and many do. I don't know. Because that's the thing about those games. They have to have both the really good and the really bad. Which is why I don't play those myself. Like Mass Effect and Cyberpunk. You can do some really awful crap in those games. But you can choose not to do those, and that's better. But... Does that mean that it's a better game for it because you have the chance to for morality, for moral choice? Is the ability for moral choice in a video game as good as the ability for moral choice in real life? It does kind of, it is kind of a macro, microcosm of that. Mass Effect is actually a really interesting and well-written game. It is. It is. And that's another point in its favor. There's also the objective qualities of production can be taken into account. God wants us to do all things excellently and for his glory. So if it's part of building a video game that is well written, that could put points in Jesus' book. Who knows? If you don't like Mass Effect, you'd enjoy Dragon Age. I, I don't play any story games. <laughs> I see Dragon Age as also being story focused because it's not action focused. Turn-based, you know. Not sure how very bad you can be, or is it just you are rather rude? Well, there is that. I mean, I haven't played them, but 
I know there's a good and bad choices route for everything. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not, a, I'm not a story gamer myself. I've never found a story in any game to be as interesting as any book or literature um, theater I've watched. Uh, it tends to be a bit more watered down for the sake of becoming a fully-fledged video game. Whereas in, in movies and books, things tend to be a lot more focused on the story than they are in those. And in any video game, I would rather they focus just on the gameplay and ignore the story. If, if at all possible. <laughs> to be quite perfectly honest. When I want to play a game, it's because of the inherent nature of the game being able to interact with it. The interactive element of video games is what I truly enjoy. I think Renegade is more the pragma pragmatic and kind of rough and rude side, being a soldier in a tough situation. I see, I see. So it doesn't get, like, crazy. That's fair, that's fair. Um, where's the weapon? Did I miss it? There it is. Let's level this puppy. See what we can do with it. Oh, it takes somber? Oh. So we cannot make it a heavy weapon. Ah. Uh, not going to be very good, is it? It has good scaling already, so. I know we have enough somber smithing stones, that's for sure. We don't have an ancient. Huh. Three twenty one, three eighty one, two seventy six, four seven, four twenty six. Okay, let's see. Let's put these on and compare. Wait, uh, how do we do this again? Stats, stats. 703, 703. No kidding. Wait, what? Oops. They're exactly the same damage? Are you serious? No way. No, no. No way. Uh, okay, so where is... This one is obviously heavier. FP cost is more. Uh, guard boost is more. Uh, hmm. So it's basically just the same. What is the move set, I wonder? Since we're on games, I've always wanted to ask someone because I could never resolve it in myself. How have you been able to play games with magic, demons, gods, etc. in them? Well, another question would be, how are you able to watch a movie with every re any reference to magic, gods, um, drugs, drink, alcohol, uh, gods, demons, etc. in them? Movies, books, etc. And the answer is, we can separate reality from fiction. We, in anything that we entertain ourselves with, we do not have to take on the elements of sin that we see in the literature, in the entertainment. We can tell that if we're reading about Hercules and all the terrible stuff that he gets up to, we don't have to say, oh yeah, Hercules, he was a great guy. He did all good things, you know, or read about Pan and, and all the horrible <laughs> adventures. It goes on. Like, you can read it, and have it not affect you and be like, I worship you gods of Greek mythology, you know? So, we, we can learn from and enjoy things that are not, that are morally ambiguous, sometimes even morally antithetical to truth, and appreciate that they are. And on the other hand, things that have demons in them are inherently Christian, because 
if if they are showing some kind of you know hellish imagery that is something that the church came up with themselves that comes from the bible ad break whenever i'm talking about anything interesting well that gives me time to feed myself Mm-hmm. Oh, hi. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pineapple on pizza. Yes. I approve. I approve. Pineapple on pizza. Yes. Just eat. Mm-hmm. Hello. We're back. Dr. Plasma says you can legit nuke a whole populated planet. You can choose to kill an entire race to gain a robot army, kill hostages, recapture a slave, kill a politician so her evil sister can take her place. Wow. As I said, you're really in a tough situation making incredibly tough choices. I mean, you can kill off the entire robot race to get the other race as allies. Yeah. Also get both if you make the right choices in the previous game. Hello, Petitrian on. Good to see you. The stream goes well. We're going a bit late because I want to play more of this game. And we're having interesting conversations. DLC goes well. We're getting places. Yeah, but unless you go in with a guide in the previous game, there are not always easy choices to make. Well, easy choices and moral choices are not the same, you know? Like, there's always the better choice. Shoot ads. But from what I heard, it was what was coming to mind recently. Like, I would watch something with some other sin in it. Right. So, like I say, God wants us to be in the world, not of it. Uh, if we w And like Paul says, I don't say to, ex to, um, to never eat with someone who is not a Christian. Otherwise, you'd have to go out of the world. Um, which, in that context, he was talking about Christians. That if Christians are doing things that are non-Christian and are saying they are Christian, don't eat with them. They're continuing in sin. Don't eat with those who continue in sin and tell others to and eat with them. Avoid those people. But you can't avoid sinners. And so, in the same way, you can't always avoid, um, you know, paganism. I mean, paganism is the root of humanity, right? It gets at our intention to fantasize about the unknown. And so I don't I don't think God is against that at all, actually. I think what God is against in terms of paganism is actually worshiping gods. Like we can see the eff the effects of paganism on entertainment, on Disney, on Star Wars, on Lord of the Rings. Like Lord of the Rings, I love Lord of the Rings, and it's about demons and angels and gods and kings so and that's why i like it because it is a fantasized version of that psychological framework that is in our heads about reality it's set in a medieval setting kind of stricken from our modern you know time and place but it is speaking to truths that we all know uh, and are moral while also using pagan imagery. And most Christians accept Lord of the Rings, but then they don't accept other things, which is quite hypocritical. So 
I love C.S. Lewis. He took all Gre Greco mythology and made it Christian. And I think that's what we all should do. Not trying to avoid those things that pagan people or secular people have wielded for evil, but rather redeeming them and enjoying them for what they are, which is not the truth, not real, but fun to imagine. I guess I was never able to resolve how some of these symbols, etc. in some games, movies, or actual symbols are used in witchcraft. Not like opening a door in the spiritual realm or something. And where do you get that, Burb Watcher? Does the Bible or any Christian anything say that Satanists or demons can be summoned? Anything can be summoned with symbols? Because that's only what the Satanists and witchcraft people believe. It's not real. They can't do it. Never has there been a monster summoned in real life by sacrifice and symbols. Never has there ever been an effect caused by a satanic symbol on a house that made people cursed. It doesn't happen. It doesn't. So, God doesn't work like that. That is not how demons work. In fact, demons making us fear them, demons making us fear certain symbols and certain imagery, is the is demonic power in and of itself. So if we ascribe power to a symbol and say, oh, that's satanic, we are allowing ourselves to be stricken with fear and deceived into thinking that it's something powerful. And that's why Satanists use them. It is the opposite of what quote-unquote good symbols are. Thank you, Pappy. I forgot to. Um, you see, you see my thought pattern? So with, with demonic imagery, there's this idea that comes from the satanic panic that satanic imagery will somehow corrupt the youth. It's like, it's not the imagery that's corrupting the youth, it's the idea to be anti-Christian. It has nothing to do with the imagery or the monstrosity or the anything like that. It's just the fear and the rebellion inside. Rebellion is true witchcraft, according to the scripture. Witchcraft, you know, people like to say, you know, try to think that, like, the use of crystals and potions will, you know, do all this crazy stuff, and it doesn't. It doesn't actually work. They're deceiving themselves into a non-reality, and that allows Satan to wield them like a knife against whatever he wants, because they're not accepting the truth. So that's, that's the real fight. The fight is not against flesh and blood. Nor is it against symbols, symbolism. It's like, those pe th there are Christians who have tattoos all over their bodies. They were Satanists beforehand, and they have 666 and naked women and, you know, daggers in the, you know, whatever, you know, astrology symbols. God made the stars. If, if they come to Jesus Christ, they can try to, you know, cover up as much as possible. But those symbols are not going to have any impact on their lives beyond what other people can see, you know? It's not going to be like, oh, I have 666 carved into my back. I can't get saved now. It's like, no. No. People just used that number because they thought it would make Christians mad. Which it does sometimes. But we don't need to get mad at that. Like, that is... That, that is something that is revealed to us in scripture about what will happen in the future. So when people use it to put on a, a show of Satanism, it's not real. It's not... It's not a power that can be wielded. So. The DLC is, is going alright. Yes, it is. I mean, so far, I'm pretty happy, I guess, with what is going on. We found a dungeon, beat some mini-bosses. Um, is this plus ten yet? No, oh, we need a somber smithing stone 10. 666 means Nero Caesar. It is a code to refer to the emperor. And I, I believe in that. I believe that to be true. There is also the idea that it is a symbol that looks like the Arabian flag. So the mark of the beast is the mark of the Arabian army of two crossed swords. The enemies of the Jews attacking them. So that's, that's another theory that I can see, but it, it's nothing like, ooh, voodoo and witchcraft is going to come into your home and 
you know, if you if you uh, play a game with some voodoo references in it, you're not going to become, you know, susceptible to the voodoo demons. I think I believed it's because of my parents in the church I grew up in, probably media as well, but you're right, thanks for answering, always been hesitant to ask about it, honestly appreciate it. You are welcome. Yes, I hope you are able to sleep well too, Pititrianon. Yes, and thanks for asking the question. This is something that I, this is a, a concept that I also truly care about a lot, because I love video games, and I don't want to do things that may make God unhappy, but... When I really read the scripture, it doesn't have any of these <laughs> these assumptions in them that some of the greater Western church has against certain ideas and concepts, like demonic imagery. Like, where did that come from? Not the Bible. The idea of, uh, of Pokemon being demonic. Where did they get that? There, there's not... What? Like, I've talked to my mother about that recently, and she's like, I don't know, it just looks demonic. And I'm like, what do you, what do you mean it looks demonic? <laughs> well, it's like the cartoon creatures, some of them have, like, teeth and angry eyes, and it just looks demonic. When something gets that weird, um, it goes into the uncanny valley, and it makes you f afraid, and it's gross, and, and I'm like, so... If I were, as a child, to draw a monster, you would, and you have, congratulated me for it. It's like, oh, it's so creative. You would do so well in art class. But when people from Japan make unique animals and monsters, it's somehow demonic. Why is that? And she was like, uh, um, good point. <laughs> and I was like, there, finally, we've, we've got to the root of the matter. Because I wasn't allowed to play Pokemon either. There was this big cloud of doubt around it. And I watch it today because I'm like, I went through this phase when I turned, I think, 21. I was like, okay, I'm going to watch all the R-rated movies. I probably shouldn't have done this. But <laughs> I don't recommend this. But I, I'm going to watch all the R-rated movies. I'm going to watch all the anime and play all the games that my parents told me not to play when I was growing up. 99% of them completely harmless because the culture or certain pastors or certain politicians told everyone that they were demonic. Parents just believed them and said, oh, that's weird. That must be demonic. And, uh, you know, Harry Potter, I think, is a little bit more on the edge because it's, you know, trying to be to make witchcraft look good. And it's like this this good versus evil sort of thing, which is, I don't know, it, it's debatable. I, I think if you don't want your children to read or watch Harry Potter, that's fine. But on the other hand, I know a lot of Christians who have been brought up with Harry Potter and they're strong Christians. And there's no difference between us and them. It's not like they have more Satan in them <laughs> than, than me. So. It's, uh, it's interesting, and I think it's very important for us to take back entertainment for God and let people know we as Christians, and Jesus himself, was not a prude who just isolated himself from the culture and didn't enjoy anything. And there was a lot to enjoy. I think God loves the art and artifice that we come up with, just like a parent rejoices in their son um, making art. But everyone will be judged for everything they say and do on this earth. And it's between each man to judge and say, God, is this right or wrong for me? And if it feels wrong for you, don't do it, you know? So if any, any video game, no matter what I say, no matter what anyone else says, is making you feel bad, is making you feel guilty that you shouldn't be playing it, you know what to do. Like, we all know what to do, but this idea that Certain things are demonic, and other things, like, th there are certain things that are demonic, such as, like, I used to watch an artist on YouTube uh, who used only, like, he would smudge a page, and then that would give him an image in his mind, and he would draw a whole art piece based on that smudged ink blot. And I really enjoyed his stuff, because it was kind of grimdark, kind of fantasy, uh, gothic horror look, and I love gothic horror. I love 
Bloodborne. I love uh, Dracula. I love Frankenstein. Um, some of this Shakespearean stuff, you know, Hamlet, and such. We would draw that, and uh, it was really cool, really well done art. And then one day he said, "Yes, I'm a Satanist," and I said, "Okay, I can't watch this guy anymore." <laughs> and he 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 he, he made a, a piece of art, and they're like, "Can you draw Lucifer?" And he's like, "Well, yes, Lucifer isn't actually a proper name. It actually came from the Greek meaning." you know, fallen from heaven or whatever it was, or, or light, you know, and um, fallen light. And so that was ascribed to him, but he never actually has a name. So he, he who is Satan is he who cannot be named, just like in Harry Potter and blah, blah, blah. And and it shows, you know, this dark creature falling and, uh, and a sun above and a moon below. And he says, as above, so below. Yeah, if you, if you know, you know. And I'm like, hmm. So, that's a an astrology and alchemy reference. And Gnostics believe that Satan is the brother of Christ, and that there is a an inverse of everything, and that Jesus is the good and Satan is the bad. But Satan is on equal grounds with Jesus, and so in some ways. It's, it's just like yin and yang. There's no real bad. There's no real good. There's just the white and the black. The different colors are different. And so when Satan is, Satan is falling, you could say he's falling up, right? So that's the mindset and the pattern of thought that this guy was doing when he was writing, d drawing his art. And when I knew that, I was like, oh, I, I don't appreciate that. <laughs> so there's definitely stuff like that that I know I know where it comes from. I know what the intention of the heart of the artist is. And it's not like watching or seeing the art itself had any negative impact on me, but knowing the intention changed it all. And I think that's the difference. When you know that someone hates God, when you know someone is trying to hurt Jesus, or hurt Christianity, like that, that hurts if you're a Christian. So... That's the effect of Satanism, you know? It's just like, oh, we can't be friends. This is, this is bad. This is, this is intentionally bad. So, anyway. Those are my thoughts for now on creativity, demonism in art. There are definitely some things I think we should avoid. We shouldn't put in front of us things that will give us nightmares, for instance. Some Christians can you know, watch blood and gore and be okay. I, I can't. And I, I feel like if if people are into that and they're okay with that, there's probably something wrong with them. There's something. <laughs> uh, God didn't say that. I did. So. Anyway, and that conversation can go on for a long, long time because there's a lot more to be said and more specifics to be gotten to. I just realized that there is not so much that um, that is actively trying to tick off God, and there is a lot more that's just trying to be enjoyable and creative. I think we should be able to appreciate and, and celebrate that, even if it does use some archaic imagery. You know? You know? And I think as Christians, like myself, Playing games like this, playing Diablo 4, for instance. I play Diablo 4 all the time. And it's an excellent conversation topic because it's like, did you know that the, the idea of Lilith came from ancient Judaism? And blah, blah, blah. And uh, she was supposedly, she was a, a, someone come up with by the uh, cult of Kabbal, Kabbalism. And that, uh, you know, the Jews actually believe that this and that and the other and... That's where it came from, and it was Judaism, and Judaism leads to Christianity, and, and the, the, you know, led to G Christianity because God wanted to save them from their cults and their idols, and blah, blah, blah. And you can, you can lead people to Jesus by playing their games that are not Christian, and whenever you do play a video game that has something Christian in it, it's like, ha, 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 look at this. This is awesome. 
and which is why we need more Christian games, so that there can be some positive visuals to identify and say, look to this, you know? And I, I, I doubt that the DLC is going to have that, but there are crosses. There is faith, there is divine holy damage, you know? Things like that. And I like to be a paladin, but that also gets to the other idea of, in a game where you can be evil, um, it's fine to be good, like to try to be good. But if you choose to and enjoy being evil in a video game, that doesn't make you evil. You have not sinned. You have not done a bad thing, right? Um, I've known a lot of people that are like, I love being a Sith in any, every Star Wars game. It's like, okay, more power to you. Because <laughs> it's just, I don't know, they, they find it fun. Just like Pastor Dustin is always saying, if it convicts you, don't play it. Don't watch whatever it is. Exactly, Sandy Peach. Agreed on needing more Christian games, yes. Yeah, because there, there's, you could take any genre and make a Christian game of it and have it be well produced, and people would eat it up. People would love it. I'm sure the Satanists out there would be like, this game is just there to preach at us, and these blah, blah, blah. But... Whenever Christian games have been published, it's never really been like that. So, same thing with anime, you know, Christian anime is very well regarded. Like, um, oh man, I wish I owned it. We have, we have Trigun, that's made by a Christian. We also have Black Clover, made by a Christian, maybe Catholic. We have, um, Ibane Renmei, very Catholic. So, yeah, yeah. The art is what you make of it, really. Uh, there's nothing in the Bible that says don't get involved in this type of entertainment. It's just like, if you if you feel like you're able to drink, then drink. If you feel shame when you drink, don't drink. Trigun and Black Clover are made by Christians. Yes, Burb, yes. Now, how, how much of Christians they are, like, do they live it out? I don't know, but yeah, which is pretty cool, pretty cool. The more you know, bling. Yeah, yeah I love Pastor Deustin too, he plays Doom. <laughs> I don't like Doom as much, but it's, it's, it's just so grotesque sometimes. But he loves Doom and he plays it and he uses it for God's glory. And if you can do that, more power to you. Mm, mm, mm. Go. So many places. Oh, Bellarat is the name. Very Middle Eastern name, too. Hmm. Interesting. Amen to that. Alright. We have the Steel Sword. We can try the Solitary Moon Slash. Uh, let's just... let's just attempt it. Let's just use it. We can also use... One of these thingamajigs. Oops, didn't do the follow-up. Oh, what? I need to read about this. Hold on. There it is. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Houston was actually saying he felt convicted about playing streaming the new Doom and decided to stop streaming it. God used it for his purpose, he said. The uh, Doom Eternal. Yeah, I tried Doom Eternal for a little bit. I enjoyed the previous one. Like, the previous one was really fun. But the new one as well, it, uh, it definitely pushes the borders of edginess in a way that I don't appreciate either. Like, some of those kills are so gruesome and grisly. It's like, there's no way. <laughs> this is ridiculous.
Also, the gameplay did not appeal to me. Most Doom games, the gameplay is good. But Doom Eternal... It was hectic and focused way more on melee than guns? For some reason? And it's a first-person shooter, so what? Whoa. Who's doing that? Ow. I should probably guard with this thing more often. Who did that? Hootie doody. Hello? MZ Wolfcat is off to bed. Have an excellent rest of your stream. Stay awesome and have a blessed one. Thank you very much, MC Wolfcat. Take care. Hit my hat in your general direction. God bless. Fairly well. We love you. Round of applause for MC Wolfcat as she leaves the show. Flights of Angels sing thee to thy rest. MC Wolfcat. People don't, you know, if, if people say, I don't want to play Diablo 4 because I, I don't feel like God would want me playing that. Like, fair enough. I feel differently, but fair enough. Like, there, there's nothing wrong with trying to be too cautious. But I think knowledge and is better than ignorance. If you go in knowing what's in it, and uh, and why it's good, or why it's bad, that's half the battle. Doing the 12-hour stream tomorrow, or is that next week? That is tomorrow indeed, Xanadu Peach. We'll be doing a 12-hour stream in celebration of the 1,600 followers. Uh, 1,660 followers we now have. Okay, I need to just get down his patterns, because this is not working. Oh, yeah, he is, Gundyr. She, she does not have... Oh. And thank you for the fabulous Frabjus follow, Burb Watcher. I do enjoy conversations you bring about. Glad to know you. Glad to have you with us. I know you do. Very glad, very glad. Now this is a totally different area. Well. Here we go. Now this weapon is the exact same amount of damage as my previous one. Of the grace of gold shall all meet death in the embrace of Mesmer's flame. By a night, Quelligliglen, Quelligliglen, Quelligliglen. Got a nice uh, spear. <laughs> he just heals. got some nice armor. No. No! Oh, I knew that would happen. Oh! Oh! He got rid of all of my stagger damage. Wow. Nice combo, Chugs. Look at this little guy. So thin. Okay, well, we know where to go next. Oh, snap. You know, I should probably use, uh, fire resistance. Probably, probably. Xanadu Beach with the Doostan Prayer remote. I love it. Is this the way? Yes, this is the way. To quote Mandalorian, this is the way. Oh, they use miracles of some kind. Where, where is that coming from? Who do that? Oh, it's that guy. Oh, new miracle. <gasps> Fun. He uses a staff. 
Can we get those stabs, I wonder? Whelp? Whelp? Don't call me a whelp. <laughs> Just kidding. I kid. Those stripped of the grace of gold shall all meet death in the embrace of Mesmer's flame. Don't do it. Miss me. Now I know all your tricks. Whoop. Uh, you're going to chug, I'll chug. Burn! Ooh. Get down here. Oh my gosh. He becomes, like, super enraged. <laughs> he looks so dorky. <laughs> mm. Man, that's hard to get away from. They're preparing us for Mesmer. Oh no! Goodness. You can use it like a sword. My words. Get wrecked. Restless heathen. Thou heathen? Shalt not evade the flame of my Invader vanquished. Crusade insignia acquired. Charles wins again! Black Firefly acquired. Fire acquired. Ash of War. Shriek of Sorrow. Got a lot of stuff just now. GG! Thank you, Leotheles. Thank you very much. We did it. First real boss, I think. Raises attack power after defeating an enemy. That's new. Oh, it was a talisman who got Blade of Mercy. Raises attack power after each critical hit. Bizarre. So the DLC talismans will be give you damage after you do a thing. Huh. Interesting. I don't know if that fire defense helped me at all. Not sure about that. Hmm. Hmm. I don't do critical hits very often. And these things are only useful outside of a boss fight. Hmm. I do like attack power, the successive attacks. I do. Also, Claw Talisman is just really good. Well, we didn't get too many runes out of that. That was interesting. A preparation for Mesmer himself, obviously. A lot of enemies are just sitting around. Which is, uh... Oh, no, he's doing something. He's stacking... He's stacking rocks. This guy is digging. Actually doing things. Praying. Yeah, this uh, this area I remember seeing in the trailer where they had an NPC with magic flying and throwing magic. So that was just for the trailer. I have ten minutes left in the stream, I'm afraid. Nine. Now. Time is ticking. I do want to be able to do the stream t tomorrow for twelve hours. And what do you think, chat? When I do... Should I do a, um, a cadre of different games? We play Lunacid. Truck Simulator. Um, Deep Rock. Galactic Survivor, Lord of the Rings Online, all the games I rarely play, or should I do the DLC all day? Because I could do that too. 
I'm tempted just to do that. What do you think, chat? What do you think? Any suggestions? Any... Anyone feel a certain way about that idea? Multiple different games, or... Just... Shadow of the Earth Tree. Is this truly a dead end? None of these doors work. I'd be fun to just focus on DLC. Could always switch off if you get tired of it. True. Slay Fever, true. A lot of people lock themselves in to a specific program on on 12 hours without realizing that things can change. How they feel can change. DLC for 12, says Xanadu Peach. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, there's a there's another vote for that. Okay, okay. I'll let people know. We'll be doing Shadow of the Earth Tree tomorrow for the 12 hour, and other games if I have the uh, this guy again. If I have the proclivity. Oh, we broke his boys. And we got an item out of him. What did we get? What did we get? His armor. Horned warrior armor. There we go. Oh! Very nice. Mainly DLC. With there some other games if you feel to do so. Yeah. I think I shall let people know that in the Discord. Yes, we have a lot of games that I can play. It's just like getting around to them when I have so many priority games, like Elden Ring and ARPGs. Hello, hello, Gamer Knight. Good evening to you. Good evening. Good to see you just before we uh, end the stream this evening. Welcome to the Shadow of the Erdry DLC. Uh, I don't know where I'm going. I'm sad I died to that little twerp, because, uh, <laughs> could have been very easy. He just got extremely aggro in his quote-unquote second phase, if you can call it that. George, we need to get over there. How do we get over there? We've already been this way, and there wasn't... <laughs> I've killed that guy before, and uh, just got spooked by him. The human brain does not learn. Whoa! That's quite an ambush. We did! Nice. Almost pushed him off. Sheesh, can we get his item? His weapon? Oh yeah, this is the way. There's a door here. Ah! Sort of frustrated by the Garfield movie, though financially successful, it was a terrible one. That sucks, they never get Garfield right. They don't. The previous movie was okay. It was really ridiculous, though. Weird choices. But uh, I enjoyed it, the first one. The first Garfield movie. The second one... <laughs> it's uh, kind of like how I feel about the Shrek movies. Like, the first Shrek movie was really memorable. Really iconic, really funny. Second and third movies, like, the second movie was good, but I won't remember it when push comes to shove. At the end of my life, I'll remember quotes from Shrek. All my life. Shrek 2? No. No. So we actually can't get up here. We can't. Or can we? No. We, we definitely cannot. Oh man. They keep egging me on. Look at this item. It's over there. Not where you are. Or, and not where you can 
even see getting to. Always find Shrek overrated? Maybe it is a little bit overrated. I can see that. But it's very good. Yeah, you do have to have a specific style of comedy. Like, that's the thing about comedy. It's the most subjective thing in human entertainment. Like, who's to say what's funny? You know, if it just doesn't hit you, it doesn't hit you. But, if you have a history of fantasy, if you enjoy... Um, what's his name? Oh my gosh. Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Robin Hood, Men in Tights. It's like the CG version of that. And I like those. Do I like Shrek? Yeah. Wish Chris Farley was alive to have played Shrek as planned. Yeah, that's a sad, sad death. Everyone knew him as Shrek, but that's a good enough thing to know him as. <laughs> and in the morning, I'm making waffles. I like that boulder. That's a nice boulder. Yeah, things like that. <laughs> Get out of my swamp! Run, run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man! You're a monster! <laughs> and then... <laughs> The Muffin Man. The Muffin Man? Well, she's married to the Muffin Man. The Muffin Man! The Muffin Man! <laughs> Who lives on Drury Lane? Uh. <laughs> so good. I'm enjoying the Great Sword. Oh no! I could be dead. I'm not dead. Be thou destroyed. Oh. Fort and I do be looking different. <laughs> Warrior for Christ, greetings and salutations. Oh, hi. Do be looking different. Is a from software integration with Fortnite? I was waiting for this. You can look like Geralt. <laughs> oh, the ashes acquired. I don't need those. I need the other thing. The cross. You're actually playing Fortnite right now? Wow. And to forget Eddie Murphy was a donkey. Yeah. I mean, how though? His voice is so particular. And he just played himself <laughs> in that. Donkey is definitely my favorite Eddie Murphy uh, thing that he was in. I don't like Eddie Mur Murphy's movies, mostly. Fortnite is everything now, so yes, only mostly dead. Is Fortnite mostly dead? I see people streaming it and playing it all the time. Only other Shrek movie quote I got. <laughs> Not Shrek 1 is. Do the roar! Oh! Oh, it's you again. I hate you. At least he doesn't have very much poise. Only when he's doing abilities, which is also annoying. Ay ya ya! Stop! Ay ya ya's in the chat, please. Please. Oh, goodness. He's too fast. No! Yep. Yep. Oh, I missed, so that spells my death. Yeah, okay. When you're out of endurance, you just, you can't do anything. It's problematic. Uh, is Elden Ring good on PS5? Yes, it is. I think it's a little bit more stable on PS5, actually. 
So if you're wondering which to get it on, uh, PS5 is more stable. PC will have a, a broader number of people to play with. Usually how it works. Also, potentially better graphics based on the strength of your computer than PS5. I think it's still ridiculous that next-gen consoles that are $500 can't be, wow, competitive with PCs. Like what does, what does next-gen mean anyway? I don't know. Just the next generation. Doesn't mean much. How did I unlock? Wall. Gosh. Dude! You are a, an evil man. An evil demon. Killed him before. You need to get your back checked out. That cannot be good for you. Ay 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 Thank you for the ay ay ay's. None of those are actually the ay 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 emote. <laughs> None of you were able to actually use it. I like how Shrek is always saying "Donkey." Yeah, that's a that's a quote. Whatever Shrek movie you're referring to. Take that. Okay, wait. You you can't wait. You just have to go full aggro. Backstab! He's weak in the back, because he has scoliosis. Got him! Sheesh, why was that so hard? Ascetics ankle guards? I don't want to look like that thing. Thanks, I guess. <laughs> Is this a tower where there's a new enemy every so often? Because that would be fun. Destroyed... destroyed towers. A recurring theme. A mi yes, there are lots of mini-bosses in these games. And that's a door to a real boss, I think. We even have... a friend. I think I'll close out this stream by summoning a friend and trying the boss. Red Main Freya. Let's go. Hmm. Next gen means exclusives. That's what it is. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Hmm. The longest time people called it next gen, even though it was current gen. I think it's because most games are made for last gen consoles. Still, it's true. True. There it is. The Charles Gamer Knight. The emote. Shrek emote. Hope you may have a good sleep, Charlie. Thank you, Petit Trinon. I will as soon as I, well, beat this boss. That? That's close, Gamer Knight. There is an emote that will show up if you just say, I think in all caps, A-Y-A-Y-A, -Y -A -Y -A, on the stream. Not in the chat, but on the stream. There it is! Oh, it shows up in the chat too if you have better Twitch TV or uh, Rank of Face Z, I, I forget which. There it is, it's from Kiniro Mosaic, a cute little school show. Good night, Charles. Good night, Xanadu Peach. Boss hype! It's the lion thing, isn't it? O horned and beast from higher sphere delivered. Take root inside the tower sculpture keepers. And perched within, we beg of thee, rise. I only got the regular Twitch, not like this. Time for cavorting. Cleanse away the 
trumpets fire. He's one of those parade dragon things. Creepy. Using a real head for the head of the dragon. Off we go. I'm not going to beat this tonight, but I can try. Oh, what is it doing? <laughs> I can't see. This is crazy. Oh, it got me. Am I dead? Close. I'm debuffed. Damn it. <laughs> it healed itself. That's no good. Don't mind me, I'm just eating. Oh, that's fun. Where is the hitbox? Oh, really? My friend does really good stagger damage. This game is scary. It is. It really is. You look like a gentleman. Thank you, Warrior for Christ. That's because I am. In God's sight. Now he's a lightning boy. You're weird. Can I say that? Got a stagger at least. I always have an issue with the lightning cats in these games. The fact that I can say that more than once... It's funny. He's a wind cat now. Is he the elements? The raid cat of the elements? Oh no. There goes all my heals. Oh! Okay. Thunder cats! We got, we got pretty close, actually. We got pretty close. Where do you get your suits? A um, couple of places. We go to thrift stores and find me suits. We also go to, uh, online, Alain Dupetit. Alain Dupetit is a, uh, is an, an, uh, a story drab. An online storefront where you can purchase three-piece suits in all sizes for less than $100. Or more if you buy multiple. So it's very cheap, very affordable, at least for suits, and you get a full a full suit. Trousers, waistcoat, and coat. I get my shirts uh, everywhere. I go to um, I also go to H and M for shirts. They fit me best that way. A good attempt, very good attempt. Thank you, Xanadu and Gamer Knight. Thank you very much. Excellent encouragement from my good top-hatted fedoralists. I didn't use any special, like, things, like, uh, greases. I should. I should. Let's see. Um... What was I thinking of? We could change my talismans. Nah, it's fine. That's not the issue. 
We, uh, we could use fire grease. I don't know if that would help. Uh, yeah, I think if we just try again, I think we'll do well. Oh yeah, runes! That's something I can use. Extra health, there it is. Here we go. Give me my runes back, you thief. Look at the size of that thing! <laughs> it's so good. Look at the size of that thing. Oh my word. Come on, I rolled. I'm dead. Or not. Oh, if we heal, he heals. That was, that's what that debuff does. Let's see. Yeah, he's an all elementals cat. The last avatar of cats. Yep. Got him in the face. That didn't do much, honestly. He has a crazy amount of health. Next phase. Ah. No! Don't be Radagon. You don't want to be like him. That's new. I don't like this face. I can't see a blooming thing when he's on top of me! I jumped it. The music is cool. Wow, he gets health back so often. Oh, cold time. Dude, this guy's crazy. We're not staggering him as much as last time. Three K. Hmm. Not great. And now is the wind part. Which means lots of ranged attacks. Like, how am I supposed to deal with that? Raid hype! End of stream raid! Oh. Welcome raiders, thank you for the raid. Appreciate ya. Oh, come on. Oh! Roll! 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 <laughs> so much roll. I think I might be able to do it by myself better now. I know the fight a bit more. Ooh! Kaito Tojiko is raiding with a party of 34. Welcome in, raiders. Thank you so much for the raid, Kaito Tojiko. I doff my cap for an excellent VTuber. How do you do? Welcome. My name is, of course, Charles Quasar Banks. The Chancellor of Chill. The Champion of chivalry, Christian content creator, and gaming gentleman of Twitch. Pleasure to make your acquaintance, everyone. Thank you so much, Kaito, for that raid. Game of Night, I don't know if you've done the shout-out, but uh, thank you in advance. Veritas, nice to meet you. King, thank you for the fabulous Framgers 300 bitty boos into Charles Quasar's banks. Beautiful, lovely taxes! I almost had it. I did. We were very close. We were very close. Yes, thank you, everyone. Yes, do check out Kaito Tojiko, my good 
followers. VTuber Celestial Being loves head pats, loathes being bonked. Let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. Excellent. Yes, uh, another brother in Christ as well. Also got a new VTuber model. And uh, yes, he deserves all the all the love and attention he gets. So check out his channel when you have the time. Follow if you have the will. And subscribe if you have the means. And thank you for the fabulous, fabulous follow, White Fang, two million. Thanks for that. And again, thank you for the bits, Kings. King777. You're a king in my heart. And Expedition Saturn. Hello. Welcome. Nice to meet you all. So, so pleased to have you all with us. And welcome to the DLC of Elden Ring, Shadow of the Earth Tree. I do ARPG mornings, Bible reading afternoons, and uh, Elden Ring evenings. Tomorrow I do a 12-hour stream in celebration of the 1,660 followers we now have. I have 300,000 runes over there, so... Need to get those. This is the last boss of a tonight's stream, so... I'm going to try to beat this guy before I am. Let's pray it doesn't take all night. Ah! <laughs> Can't see a blooming thing. Let's go! I kind of wish that this fellow would give me more opportunities to attack him. Appreciate that. And not move around so much. Give me dizzy spells. Also, maybe not hit me as much. All three of those are things that I would like not to happen. <sighs> okay, I did much better with the uh, summon, for sure. For sure. Love it, bro. Thanks for the shout out. You're welcome. Thank you for the for the excellent words. Twelve hours, indeed, Veritas. Good luck, man. Have a good fight. Will do. Will do. Lord Orfeo, the DLC goes well. This is my first real boss fight that is giving me any trouble. Seems fun. Seems good. We we got him down to at least 25% of his health in uh, second try. So this is the fourth try. <laughs> First try alone really did not work out well. I can definitely see that we need stamina more than anything else mm -hmm. at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. All right, off we go. I shall ever emerge victorious. I shall. Oop. Uh. So he has way more range than I do. I don't know when his attack timings are. Because he doesn't have a traditional body. Can't really judge that very well. Ad starts in one minute. Oh yeah, I can buff my stuff. Right? Oh, I can't buff this because it's not a regular attack. Regular weapon. Forgot about that. I hate somber weapons so much. I'll probably switch to the Banished Knight Sword. This is absolutely insane. Dude, how? He's a chili boy now. What? Oop. Miss me. <laughs> Ow. What? How are you supposed to follow this exactly? 
Thank you for the fabulous, fabulous follow, Tachiko Makuro. Good to know you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, tip of the hat to you, too. Um, I think we do need elemental resistances. As much as I hate to say it. The ad break is on. Bolt Drake, is there a cold Drake item? <laughs> That'd be nice. Ah, White mm -hmm. Fang has redeemed. Hydrate thyself. Hydration is here. Thank you very much for the hydration. How are you doing, Lord Orfeo? And how is your Elden Ring stream going? Yeah, your streams. Also, check out Lord Orfeo. If you would. There's a glitch. There's supposed to be an ad, but I only hear it, but I see the stream. Nice. Well, I, that's not a glitch. That's a feature. Look at the way he walks. The stupid way he walks. There's half my health gone. Very unfair. Ugh. Got him. I will get him. I will. I hate this face so much. Man, what is the timing on that? So fast. Oh. Every hit demands an Estus. Oi! Really is a dance. It's all about the timing. The beat. When his attacks come out. Doing your own attacks in between the beats. Ooh. Yep. Really? No! Not well timed. Oh! Oh, calm now. We Half health. Know, like, up. And hit it till it dies! Nice! High five! Hit it till it dies! Thank you. Thank you, Game of Night, for that. Lightning, rain, wind, you fight a storm. It's true. That's exactly what's happening here. Oh, rawr, rawr, rawr. He doesn't do fire. I'm over encumbered. Confound it. Um. We, yeah, we need the. <laughs> <laughs> the elemental resistances more than anything else so maybe we're going light this time never mind nothing has good resistances that's also light all about that heavy armor apparently the gauntlets of solitude and the set of solitude have that in the best amount you beat Margaret today. Congratulations, Lord Ofeo, for beating Margaret. Huzzah! Yay. Only the best strats coming from this way. <laughs> best strats. He also doesn't do any holy damage, does he? Maybe, maybe he does magic damage. I don't know. Yeah, very much uh, kudos to you, goes Lord Ofeo. Proud of you. Proud of you. How'd you feel about him? Did he feel too hard and then he had a crisis of faith and tried again only to win when you least expected it? Did you go off and grind? Did you beat your head against him till you won? Did he feel doable at first or impossible? Do tell. I am interested. 
We use the rune arc. These these tend to not help me, but maybe the placebo effect will. <laughs> uh, if you know it's a placebo, it won't work. I really like the move set of this great sword. I don't like not being able to imbue it. Right, here we go again. Oh, I'm fat rolling. Oh, sweet mercy. That doesn't look good. There we go. I shouldn't run in yet. Second phase, my least favorite. Ooh. Ah! I don't know what he's doing. Staying away from him is actually a pretty good idea, because then you can at least see what he's doing. Whoa. Don't step on me. Too many bosses have done that. Already. Ah, uh, frames. This is one I really have struggles with, because it's hard to see in the wind. As weird as that sounds. You can see the wind, which is a problem. I guess he's kicking up dust is the issue. Also, <laughs> he moves like a ribbon. Weird thing to say, but true. Ah. No, I'm getting hit by that. Ah. Yes, I did the final strike. Legend felled. Remembrance of the dancing lion is mine. Charles wins again. Yay! All right, we did it, friends. That was fun. That that was very hard. I have not learned the fight, but I've learned some of it. I'm already thinking about when I'll do it again. First... I'm a winner! Woohoo! Woo Divine Beast Head. Is that... Can we wear that? Are they that nice as to just give us his head to wear? Uh, no. <laughs> no, they're not that nice. No, wait. There it is. Oh my gosh. It's huge. It's like the boar head. <laughs> I just put my own arm in my own mouth. Like the boar head from Dark Souls 1. Too big. Too big. That's really cool, though. Boar? I love that you can do that. Meet the boar. I'm him now. See? Amazing! Rar. Rar. Amazing! Rar. Rar. 
Amazing meatball. It does look like a meatball. Just hairy meatball. Okay. <laughs> that was a ridiculous boss fight. I don't, I don't know. I don't... <laughs> oh, it was, it was fun, though. I quite enjoyed myself. Heavy load still, really. I did have to change all of my talismans, but... It was worth. It was very worth. Hmm, that's what I would like to wear, but... Too heavy. Too heavy! Why? Why? Need more endurance. Do I have 900,000 or do I have 90,000? I feel like I'm going insane. It's 90,000. Where did all my runes go? Did he eat them? Got a realm blessing. Did I not pick them up? Was I an idiot and I'd leave them when I died? They're not here. So I must have lost them. Ah. Uh, oh well, we can easily get that back just from killing things in the world, actually. 320,000 is not too bad to grind in the DLC. It's a lot, but it actually isn't that much in the big scheme of things. Well, say goodnight to uh, Gerald. Hey! Not hey, goodnight. Night, Gerald. He's come far from being in the shadow of his brother Geralt, the Witcher. He's now taken on his own, his own uh, personality. Hey! Hey! All right, friends. That'll do it. That's all I needed to do for the end of this stream tonight. So, 